Family meeting, everyone. Ding, ding, ding. Gather around your Actually, walls. Actually, can do a bit of a ding, ding, ding. Yeah, sure. You want me to do one? Yeah, love it. Oh, no. Now I wish we didn't. <laughs> now I wish we didn't. A weak gong. <laughs> and that's the weak gong of excitement made famous on this show. <laughs> because the weak gong is sounding, and It means yeah. something incredible is about to happen. <laughs> And um, uh, we've been having a think, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And we've also been having a dream. <laughs> and so a drink. Dream, think, drink. Yeah. And we've come up with an idea. Mm. We've come up with an idea that we hope could really become the number one highlight on the Australian calendar <laughs> for this <laughs> yeah. year. Yeah. And I know a lot of people like, say, Grand Final Day. Uh, Christmas is a biggie. We're not going to steal any of those. We're not out to Grinch anyone. Australia Day is an important one for Australia. Keep it, keep it there, I yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. And celebrate it wholeheartedly. Mm. What if we could add one to the mix? Be nice. And uh, coming into the certainly the Melbourne Cup Carnival. Yep. Melbourne Cup, what is it? Something like 4th of November or something this year? I don't know. Uh, Tuesday. Yeah. A, a Novemberish Tuesday yep. of this year. First Tuesday of the month. So what are we? We're, we're probably about five or six weeks away yep. from the Melbourne Cup. Yep. The nation does tend to get excited about horse racing. Well, it's the race that stops the nation here. End of the year. We wondered, look, it's fun and it's great, but it's it's very difficult for people to be involved mm. in owning uh, an animal in the Melbourne Cup. Yep. They have to be usually a sheik, if not a very, very lucky horse trainer. Yes. Um, being a sheep, though, sheep n- never hurts. No, no, yeah. If you've got enough, if you're an oil baron, um, you soon, certainly have enough money to buy top-level horses. We thought, is it possible for us? It, it, the first question is, is November and the months around it overcrowded with horse racing? And we say no. 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 We think there's room for one more. Mm. But where? A lot of the venues are taken. Yes. A lot of the good venues, certainly yep. Flemington where the Melbourne Cup is at, that's taken. Yep. Um, you know, Randwick's got its races and stuff in Sydney. Yep. A lot of the good venues are taken. But what if we move outside the city, Ando? Yes. Is it possible, we thought, for us to get the lease on a racetrack mm. and to create the Hamish and Andy Turf Club? Yeah. To create our own turf club and hold our own people's turf club horse race yeah in honor of the people if you listen to this show you will own this you'll automatically become a member yeah you'll be a member you'll be a member yeah and we could even look into getting a a secondhand laminator if you want membership (laughs) yeah yeah, no we should that'd be nice we'll get a laminator yeah yeah we'll get a laminator Mm. and you can you can apply and have your membership card sent out if you're a listener of the show you're now a member of the turf club Mm. so the turf club exists in theory Mm. we just need a venue for the turf club oh i i a low-level but usable racetrack yes. that we could get the lease for because we want to hold an invitational horse race. An invitational horse race, you don't have to be an elite horse. It'll be handicapped. It'll be handicapped. <laughs> yes. You can have a Shetland in it. The, the Shetland might only have to run 100 metres. Yes. Now, if you're entering a race horse, like if a Mary Kane, who won the um, Melbourne Cup a couple of years ago, yeah. if he wants to come and race, yeah. he might have to do 10 laps. He might have to do 10 laps And the, the Shetland doing... does 100 metres. Yeah. Now, if you're two guys in a horse suit, yeah. you might only have to do 20 metres. <laughs> and you can still get beaten by Shetland. Yeah. We'll have an official handicap. The dream is we get yeah. an official handicapper to like make it a legit and, and fair horse race. But and, before that, we need a track. And, horse, and also, Ham, we feel like... I'm, I mean, of course, the Melbourne Cup is the race that stops the nation. Yep. This is, this is our favourite part. <laughs> it seems a little bit irresponsible to just grind to a halt so quickly, to stop all of a sudden. The inertia is quite dangerous. Isn't it? That's where so we To go from 100, a nation's going 100, <laughs> 100 k's an hour to then suddenly slamming on the brakes. Whiplash. At the, on that Tuesday. Yep. And then what? By 4.30, we're back at 100 k's an hour. No, thanks. Very irresponsible. So what we'd like to do is the day before the Melbourne Cup. Yep. Hold the race that slows down the nation. We're pumping the brakes. <laughs> Just to so ease it, ourselves into that, ra- that, that day. So by the time we hit that Tuesday, mm. everyone's, we've almost slowed to a walk. <laughs> and so it's a much <laughs> more easiest. responsible stop yeah. on the Tuesday. Better on your knees. The race that slows down a nation. We want to hold it the, the Monday before the Melbourne Cup. So here's what we need. This, be- is, this is probably how the first Melbourne Cup happened. Because yeah. now what, here's what we need. Mm. A track. Yep. Horses. Mm. Um, and well, let's like, start with the track. Let's start with the track. If you, if anywhere, in, anywhere Australia, in Australia, if you're listening anywhere in Australia, and you know of a turf club that we can have the lease of, it doesn't have to be a good one. We need to be able to can, take it over though, because I mean, yeah. uh, in an ideal world, we probably have to set up like a birdcage area for VIPs. Yep. I mean, there might be like a local, like the cobbler. Yep. Wants to buy a marquee to sure. entertain his VIP <laughs> yeah. boot clients. <laughs> you know, we want to take over the town as well mm. because hopefully everyone from Australia is converging on this town mm. for the race that slows down the nation. So, 
anywhere in Australia, if you know, if you've gone, if you used to live in a country town, if you are in a country town, if there's anywhere that has a race track and, and hopefully a club meeting area. And, you know, it wouldn't hurt to make this like an Olympic bid. Yeah. You know, bid, bid for the, bid for the race. Pam, bloody excited about this. We've just launched our race that slows down the nation. It's the People's yeah. Horse Racing Carnival. Yeah. I mean, it's it's open to anyone. Yep. Anyone can enter on the horse side of things and anyone can come you along and not- everyone's a member of the turf club. So there's not really much exclusion that goes on. No. You just have to get there. And we also need a, a racetrack. We do need one of those. One of the critical elements. If you've got a bad horse... This could be its chance. This, yeah, <laughs> this is it's actually great news for you. Yeah. Because we will have a handicapped race of any type of horse, pony. The dream would mule. Yep. Well, they, would, would put a mule. Chuck in. a donkey. Yep. Uh, I haven't seen the film Racing Stripes, but I believe it was sort of a kids' film that centered on. A, was it a zebra that yeah, turned out to be a great thoroughbred horse? Yeah. Uh, look, very unlikely that a zebra we will be entered from an open range zoo anywhere around Australia, but we'd take it. We'd, yeah, we'd, Jeez, we'd take a zebra. But what we need first is a track yeah. anywhere. Yep. In Australia. This, this is how they start the Melbourne Cup or the Kentucky Derby or any of the big races. They yeah. go, hey, guys, yeah. before we yeah. tell everyone about this, we need a track. It doesn't have to be a good one. No, no way. Uh, we need a bit of space. Uh, yep. We need, we'd love a clubhouse of some description. That's true. We need we'd like running water, some yep. toilets, yep. an undercover area at a very, at a bare minimum. Mike, you think you might have a good place? Um, yeah, how are you going, guys? I've got, um, I've got, I'm actually based in Sydney, but I own a little country pub in a, little, a town called Tom Ingley. Yep, Tom Ingley. Which is in between Parks and Dubbo on the Newell Highway. It's got a population of about 40. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got the pub. It's got a 24 hour license, so we can keep that thing rocking. And, okay. and um, <laughs> okay, yes, Mike. And they have, and they have a picnic race meeting March, April every year. Oh, they'd so be packed up by now, wouldn't they? Yeah, oh, and yeah. It's, and it's a walk to the pub. So it's nice and easy. Jeez, how far? How long's the track? Uh, well, it's, it's. I think they race up to sixteen hundred meters. I suppose yep. you can just keep going around. And so, uh, grass track. Uh, grass track. Yep. Um, yep. W- talk us through the facilities. How many people is it used to having when, say, they put a race meet on? They do one a year. You say one a year. I'd, I'd, I'd suspect there'd be somewhere between two and th- two and three thousand people get there. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Good. So, good. Okay. I so mean, so sure. it's not yeah, just book, forty book, people turning up. No, no, no. Bookmaker. Well, people do the, the the country race meeting circuit, I suppose. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so no, the bookmakers and from from all the country meetings and heaps of horses and heaps of fun. So, is, if, if for a town of forty people, Mike, how many people are at the pub? A night, like, was a good night at the pub? Well, we're, fortunately, we've just had a gold mine open up behind the pub, so the, pub, the pub's pretty busy at the moment. Oh, but, right. uh, if, I know, <laughs> if I know my old Wild West films, that's always a good thing to have near a pub. <laughs> are, you, you're, are, you, are you sort of uh, near Glen Logan Street, are you? <laughs> no, mate. I'm, uh, as I said, I'm from Sydney. I'm on my way out there now and just heard you guys looking for a town. So I'm sure go- I'd love sorry. to accommodate you. No, I might have Googled the wrong timing. I was just trying to... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was on Google Maps just trying to talk a bit of local knowledge with you. Oh, you near Neuyau Street, are you? Mate, I'm number one Neil Highway. That's it. It's the only road I know. I've got trying to be mates with him. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Mike, thank you very much. Let's <laughs> hold that thought. Let's hold on to Mike's details. More people coming. Let's mate, just... Not a bad start. It's a great start. Got a racetrack and we're now best friends with the... Only pub in town. And there's a gold mine nearby, so you know there's going to be people in town that want to get a marquee. Yeah, it's true. This is great. Keep them going in there. 131060. Mm. We need a track. And you can go to hamishandy.com. We'll set that up there as well if you want to nominate a track overnight. Uh, Edwina, you've got a yes. suggested track for us. I definitely do. <laughs> what are we talking? Um, we're talking a very country town. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a dirt track. That's okay. okay. Um, and it's located in the town of Mungandai on the Queensland New South Wales border. Mungandai. Yes, Mungandai. Have you heard of it? Can't no. say we visited no, no. or heard of it. Um, <laughs> but God, I like the sound of it. So, what, what's the population of Mungandai? Um, well, it says on the sign a thousand, but I can tell you now it's probably like only five hundred to three hundred people. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> old sign. And um, and how many race meets are they having normally at this track? They have one a year in July, oh, okay. um, the second weekend of July. It's a winter race, so yeah, okay. okay. And, and, and is it uh, everyone bumped out from that now? There's not a lot of like, has all the stuff been taken away? Yeah, there's nothing so really it's clean. there. Yeah, because they clean. The show won't be on. Like they only use it for the show and the races, and that's it. Right. Jesus okay. So we've good. got a bit. Where of are you living area. at the moment, Edwina? Um, I'm from Brisbane. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you, but yeah. you just why do you know, why do you know so much about Mungadai? 
I used to live there. My family lives there. Okay, good, good. Thank would, you. Would the, would the local people and the council, do you think, be open to the idea of having the race that slows down the nation in Mungandai? Oh, they would love it. It would be honestly such a gift to the town, to be honest. <laughs> well, no, it'd be a gift to us. I mean, we're the guys that need the racetrack. This yeah. is, the show needs a racetrack. Yeah, I mean, just just because, I mean, the ideal world would be we have a few marquees and stuff set up for some of the bigger you yeah. know, shops and companies in the town. Who do, like, who do you reckon <laughs> would take a marquee? Like, what do you mean? Sorry. Well, like at the yeah. Melbourne Cup, they've got like the Emirates marquee and Meyer and stuff. Obviously, we won't be aiming that high, but like, would yep. there be any local businesses that might want to get a marquee in our birdcage? Oh, yeah, from, from Mungandai. Yeah, yeah. like, who's, yeah, who's, but, who's uh, the big names? The who'd... Two Mile Hotel would love a marquee. Yeah, yeah. 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 Marquee. And what about, where's your, who's your dad work for? I mean, does, does your dad want to jump in and try and get a <laughs> yeah, marquee? Yeah, my dad, my dad um, is a sheep farmer. Okay, so... <laughs> he just bought <laughs> you by sheep. <laughs> <laughs> we cross line down to the sheep marquee, celebrating maybe, all things wool. Maybe he'll throw in a sheep in the race. Oh, be okay. great no, as a well, warm-up as the undercard. <laughs> <laughs> the sheep race. Thank you very much, Edwina. We'll hold on That's to your great. details. Charlie, where are you recommending? I'm recommending Tumbarumba. Where's Tumbarumba? It's got a bloody good name. <laughs> it's got a corker of a name. Yeah. Tumba Bloody Rumba <laughs> is situated. Uh, if you know where Tarkata is, which is where I'm from, it's halfway between Sydney and Melbourne on the Hume Highway. So it's in good proximity to everywhere. So it's kind Tumbarumba's, of... Tumba's about 60 k's east of us. So right. it's up in the hills in the piss picturesque mountains. It's man from Snowy River Country. You can't get a better horse place oh, there would than be so Tumbarumba. Many. Would we would we actually have people fighting to enter? Like in terms of there's I, re- I, of, I, I reckon so. Yeah. There's a lot of horse people up there. They've got they've got a good annual radio up there. They've got a really good camp draft club. They've got a really good team penning um, sports club, adult riding club. There's a bar. We need a bar. So There's cl- a bar. It's, so it's close to Canberra, Ham. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. H- how far out of Canberra would it be? Uh, it's probably two and a bit hours out of Canberra. So you could, you could, fly, distance. You could fly into Canberra. Like it does if, allow, if it's near enough to an airport, it allows everyone in the country to sort of get there. Because, Charlie, I think, I'm, I'm just guessing here, but I think last year at the Melbourne Cup, there's about 110,000 people and they broke the record. Yeah. If we have similar numbers, can Tumbarumba handle 110,000? God, yeah, we can ha- they can handle Tumberfest. <laughs> yeah, <love, laughs> How love many people attitude. go to Tumberfest, Charlie? Oh, about 50-odd thousand, I reckon. Really? Gee. Oh, t- we had Leo Sayer last year. Oh, <laughs> gee, gee, sorry. <laughs> Is Tumberumba getting too much? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, great. All right, Charlie, it's on the list. We, yep. we, we, we've got to... We've got to Build up a bit of a list here, Ando, and look at the facilities mm-hmm. and the pros and cons. We've well, got our homework should set, tonight. Should we set when do we, when do we want to lock in a track by? End of the week? No, Thursday. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how fast I'm moving on this thing, mate. Wow. Okay. <laughs> impressive, isn't it? It's so the impressive. man that could always shave one day off a deadline. <laughs> now nah, Thursday, but if um if needs be Friday. <laughs> But we will. Let's do it. Because <laughs> yeah, be once we've got the track, mate, this is only in about five weeks. So there's, yeah, let's, there's Portaloos. And then let's look into the, the there's legalities lanyards. Of, of trying to get a, a handicapped horse race. Yeah, there's horses to muster. Yes. There's a lot to organise. No, Thursday. Same as then. Pam, Melbourne Cup is referred to as the race that stops the nation, but it is irresponsible to stop so abruptly, Ham. Hence, the race that slows down the nation is something we're hoping to get up. Give yourself more distance to slow down. It's going to be safer for you, and it's going to be safer for those around you as you come to a halt. We are looking for a turf club, a racetrack anywhere in Australia. Go to hamishnetty.com to nominate those that track. When we knew we were going to do this on today's show, and I thought we might get two tops yep. that would be good submissions. Yeah. We are looking at a list of a solid half dozen. Yep. Maybe even as many as ten that qualify for what we need, which is essentially a club that's not doing anything yep. for a couple of months. Can we have the lease? Good facilities in a town yeah. that's, you know, within maybe a couple of hours striking mm. distance of the nearest capital city so everyone can get there. Yep. And a you know, if there's like a caravan park and stuff in the town, because we're hoping that up to 100,000 people could descend on the town, yeah. we need to be able to accommodate them. So we'll need a pub, we'll need a bakery, yeah. you know, we'll need a- Petrol. Wouldn't hurt if there was a convenience store that, yeah. you know, spare undies, yeah. just things that you might need for the weekend. Hey, um, the Melbourne Cup itself, um, when it comes to the horses and, you know, and Derby Day yep. uh, at uh, Royal Randwick, um, it's very elitist. It only allows the best horses to run. We, as an experiment, called up earlier today, um, around about two o'clock and- 
asked to nominate a horse and they said, no, there's mm. an official process. Yeah, exactly. we went, well, that stinks. That's the thing that's stopping everyone getting too involved. Yeah. Exactly. And our horse race doesn't have that, Ando. We are open. We're going to handicap. We're only going to have one race. Yep. We're going to handicap it to uh, any horse-like animal can run, <laughs> whether it's a Shetland, uh, a thoroughbred, yep. a workhorse. Yep. Um, you know, a three. Oh, there's no such thing as a three-legged horse. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, what are those miniature horses called? I think they're called miniature horses. Okay, I've yeah, got it. We'll get one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. A very. If you have a cow that was yeah. born with a very long neck, <laughs> and you're like, everyone thinks it's a horse from a distance, we'd almost enter that, and yeah. it would probably be coming off quite a short right yes. distance for the Michelle has contacted us. Michelle, welcome to the People Show, and thanks for reaching out. Not a worry at all. How are you guys? Michelle, you have some experience with racing different types of horses against each other. I do. I worked for one of Victoria's top trainers and I'm also involved in uh, all the local pony clubs and HRC AVs. So Fantastic. It's, it's this is the type of girl we need. Definitely need someone for the HRC AV. So um, Michelle, what, what were the two types of horses that uh, went up against each other? Okay, so we do what's called uh, horse trials mm-hmm. and during that you have cross country. So you go over 17 jumps over five kilometres. Yep. In a few minutes. We have uh, some donkeys that compete in that every year. <laughs> and you're not just being mean to the horses, like they're real donkeys. They are real donkeys. Uh, Same the, size jumps or do they have smaller jumps? No. Um, well, the jumps start at 60 centimetres and go up to a metre, yep. depending is, on what class of rider you are. Michelle, is there a fairly big donkey racing community in Australia that we don't know about? Uh, there, there are, donkeys are becoming actually quite popular. There's a fairly big waiting list if you want a, a trained donkey. <laughs> <laughs> race, race donkey. <laughs> right, okay. Well, this is good news. Well, this, is good news. That, this is actually perfect so, so news for us, Michelle, because if there's a waiting ho- list. So you've seen horses go against donkeys in a cross-country race? I have. Now, the only issue you guys are going to have mm. is horses that haven't been around donkeys before are a bit afraid of them, so they won't oh, pass right. the donkey. They tend to look at the donkey as if he is 50 foot high and 50 foot wide, and until <laughs> one of the horses gets courage... Yeah. None of the others will pass it. They all hang behind like there's an invisible wall stopping them. That's, That's what makes this race so no, exciting. Doesn't it? Because, because there's if nothing- a donkey's out ahead and, we're, and it, it started, say, with a 200-metre head start and there's a horse flying around and then like suddenly- We're going to have, an, we can have for some reason, Diva out there. Like a force field just stops and trots at the same pace as a donkey 30 and, metres behind until it. Until the icebreaker runs past and Maccabi <laughs> Diva goes, I can't, now it's safe to pass the donkey. <laughs> can I just show up another idea, yeah. Ando? Thank you so much, Michelle. Michelle, um, you're fantastic. We'll have Michelle on standby as our horse v donkey expert. Yes. We definitely want to train donkey running. Now, I think that makes it super exciting yep. for the people's race. Is a donkey a mule? Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just going to try a quick get out of here. Go quickly. I know we're going go, to get out of here for scooper, but one idea. Animal costumes are very funny. Yes. Greyhound with a fake mane on its back. What do you mean? What, so it's like, a little horse? No, no, we're not. A little fast horse? <laughs> no. Tell me that's not funny. No, no, no we're not. <laughs> and a little fake saddle. We, we'll get trampled on this small. It's too fast. It's too fast. No. It'll start last and take, and, and take out everyone else. <laughs> Pending. TBC. TBC. That's why you don't bring up loose ideas at <laughs> 559. <laughs> It's a little bit longer than you expect, doesn't it, <laughs> that bugling? Ando, mm. the race that slows down the nation. Our decision yesterday to host our very own horse race yep. the day before the Melbourne Cup. Mm. So when the race that stops the nation happens, yeah. we'll have slowed to a good pace. Exactly. It won't, be a, it won't be a risky stop. <laughs> exactly. Too abrupt. Bad Too on up. your joints yeah. if you just go straight into a stop. That's why you certainly need a race to well, slow we, down the nation. you could skid. Hey, In fact, you'd almost definitely skid if you just stop immediately. We're going to go... Uh, it's going to be, we're going to call it a carnival, but there's only one race. Yep. The single race that will happen is anything that's horse-like. Yep. It, none of this stuff where they have only elite horses, the mm. Melbourne Cup and these other race days. Oh, hang on a sec. That's two men in a horse suit. You're out. Yeah. yeah exactly. No, you're in. You're in our race. We salute that. And it'll be handicapped with it's donkey, mule, Clydesdale. One of the most exciting things to come out of yesterday's show was when we were talking about like, where are we going to hold the race? And, you know, can we have a donkey in it? We learnt that there is quite a large culture of racing donkeys. Yeah. And also, horses fear donkeys, as in they won't want to pass them. Yeah. They're so, like if you're a donkey of- and you can get the lead, you could win. <laughs> you could win. Long-necked cows, I think, were voted out <laughs> by you. I just showed you earlier in the show the picture that I had made up of the greyhound with a mane. Yeah. 
So if I can get a mane stitched to a greyhound or glued on, <laughs> yeah. then <laughs> I meant stitched like, you know, you can get a toupee kind of like, you know, yeah, fake yeah, hair sure. kind of woven in. Get a weave. Get a weave on a greyhound. Obviously, uh, the safety of all animals is going to be the key here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah so it's going it to be a humane weave. If, if, if it passes and we've yep. got people uh, that we've lined up to make che- all these checks and balances. I think a little mini horse greyhound would look fantastic <laughs> running around the track. Even if we just, what about this? Mm-hmm. We just get him as our dog. Okay, yeah. For yeah the, so. He can be the, the official dog yeah. of the carnival. <laughs> <laughs> There's something the Melbourne Cup doesn't have. have a dog of the carnival. <laughs> <laughs> don't have an official dog. <laughs> See, this already, you yeah. realise when you relax the rules a bit, <laughs> you can start yeah, getting yeah. A, lot, a lot more great Take stuff. your blinkers off, <laughs> Melbourne <laughs> exactly. Cup. Exactly. Take your blinkers off. Because get yourself suddenly... an official dog. <laughs> You're so focused on the horses, horses, you forgot to get an official <laughs> dog. dog of the cup. Yeah, well, that's right. That, that, I, bet, I bet you now, tomorrow, <laughs> the papers will have a story about how a beagle or something is the official dog, dog of the Melbourne exactly. Cup. Watch. Watch. <laughs> Mark my words. Here, can, I, can I run past a checklist for you, Ando? A yep. few things that I would like to get, get, the, get the wheels rolling on mm-hmm. this week, because unfortunately, we... We are racing, uh, we're scrambling to get this done. It will be on November 2nd. We know it's so, going to be the so day before So everyone in Cup. Australia, or if you're listening to this internationally, just make sure you get to Australia. That's we don't know day. where it's going to be yet, but we'll, on we'll, November 2nd. We'll have, the, we'll have, obviously, the racetrack sorted, hopefully, in the next couple of days. Yep. Automatically, by listening to the show, you're a member of the racetrack. Mm-hmm. We're going to work on some laminated memberships, mm-hmm. if, that's, if possible. So you're going to have a card when yep. you turn up to the track. Let's, let's have a look at a few things. A trophy. Mm-hmm. Can we get the biggest trophy ever made in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. As big as it, like, the, you would need the... a trailer. So you win a trailer and a trophy. <laughs> so you're, uh, ideally, if someone's driven some their horse. Might, yeah, but some people, like, say, say people will, uh, will have to mm-hmm. drive their horse in a horse float yep. to the venue. If yep. they win an additional trailer, are you Can hoping... you put a trailer on the back of a horse float? Can you put a trailer on a trailer? I think you can. Think you can. <laughs> <laughs> or, look, if you think you're a chance to win, have a mate with a ute come along as well yeah. and, and a trailer. Yeah. No, we'll give you the trailer, mm. but the trophy's built on the back of the trailer. So it's an sure. absolute whopper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. It'd be uh, nice that, can I just, sorry to jump in, yeah. I'm all up for a big cup, yep. but it'd be nice to have a picture with, with the winner holding it. You know, like, can't you just... Hold, put get reach a hand up onto the trophy's handle. Okay, so if it's make, in a trailer, so it looks like they're yeah, holding it. Up. Oh, you could touch it; you yep. wouldn't be able to lift it up because and, it'd be huge. and just a big straw. Because if people like drinking out of like once you win, you got to drink. We'll out have some cup. like poly pipe coming out. Yeah, some PVC pipe. Um, I wouldn't mind a big name horse coming along. Oh, okay, like an ex Melbourne Cup horse. Sure. Be in it. Because there's got to be one now that's sort yeah. of like the John Stamos of horses or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's pretty big. Maybe ran yeah. in like the 99 Cup yeah. or something now and he's super old and... Got to gallop in him still. Doesn't even have to gallop. Yeah. He can wander around. <laughs> like if he's a really old horse. Yeah, sure. That'd be sure. good to have in Okay. Next. No, I like that. That's definitely in. Um, when we decide where the town is and where mm. the racetrack is, I'd like them to have a day off. Oh, okay, yeah. So I'd like the mayor to give the townspeople a day off. Because in Melbourne or in Victoria, Cup Day is a public holiday. Yep. And so wherever this race is, I think it would only be fair that ever that we declare it a public holiday for that town, let's so go, everyone can come let's to go the, the Shire, yeah, for the surrounding areas, the, the, yeah, the greater district. And like the only Melbourne. other, I mean, there's a bunch of other stuff that we can get to, but mm. the only other thing that I think is really pressing is when we open it up for horse entrance. Yeah. I'd like to have a knight. What do you mean? I'd like to have a guy in a full suit of armor and the horse is dressed as a as a jousting horse. <laughs> okay, and so he rides with his jousting stick. I get you now, like a medieval knight. Yeah, yeah. I thought you mean like a knight to go through them. You and I catch up, have a pizza and a beer. You and, and I need a knight <laughs> to run some numbers on this. I'll bring Excel. No, I need it. I want a medieval knight. Okay, so uh, and then so a one kind of like one war, of the entrance war ready or jousting full suit of armor. Yeah, okay. and a sword and a shield. Not There's got to be someone in Australia that's got that. Not necessarily selected. But um, it'd be great to um, have them enter, enter. In the race? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because they would be handicapped heavily because how many, they are a lot heavier than a jockey. How many horses are you thinking for the race in total? Eight, eight horse-like animals? Yep. I think eight's a good number. This Let's is, this is eight. how yeah, you do it. This is how you do it. how you organise a horse race. Maybe should Andy driving you home. <laughs> the race that slows down the nation. We're pretty bloody pumped about this. It's on Monday, November the 2nd. <laughs> That noise will be trumpeted by Andy Lee from the start line. <laughs> and that is a promise I have made on behalf of the show to the people. And uh, you will be doing the official yep. bugling. I can bugle. To rally I our horses I can. Yeah, to sure. the start line. Yep. 
on that, on that day, Would Ando, you like, you know, I've got that dumb, you tiny, don't dumb trumpet. Tiny trumpet. Would you like to bring, no, bring the dumpet? <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> you silly little trumpet. <laughs> bring it along. Yeah, bring the dumpet. We'll just, uh, we'll do it on that. We no. want to find a turf club and we're confident we can. We're building a yep. short list and it might be announced as early as tomorrow. In fact, I promise, I believe I promised on the show yesterday. Yep. The venue will be announced tomorrow. Keep going, keep going to hamishnanny.com if you can think of a racetrack. You may have just driven past one at the back of Burke and you go, oh, that would be good. We want one that's. That's not doing a lot. No. Because, we, you know, the, all the biggies are booked out in yeah. the capital cities, and that's why it's probably going to be a few hundred k's away from the nearest city. Yep. But somewhere in Australia, we'll take over this racetrack. We'll yep. lease it for a few months if we have to. Whatever yep. we have to do. It'd be great if there's a sheltered area like undercover and some basic power and water. Mm. And, of course, the actual horse track and it's- some facilities for horses. Stables. We want the mayor on board for wherever Shire or that's, Town's in. Yep. And that's mayor as in, you know, the head dude in the town, not... Yep. Female horse. Yes, sorry, that's true. Yeah. We've got the mayor and the stallion on board if they're there. Um, Hame, it's going to be open to everyone to come. Yep. Uh, the race that slows down the nation the day before Melbourne Cup, November 2nd. We don't know where it is. We do have a question for you. Yes, here's the question. Based on these facts, the facts are these. It will be great fun. Hmm. <laughs> it's, it will have at least one race. Yep. Probably just one. Just one race. Just one race yeah. um, featuring... But it's open to any horse-like animal. Yes. So you've got horses, donkeys, Clydesdales, miniature ponies, yep. Shetlands, maybe the greyhound with the mane on it. Yep. If it's allowed to race for, through sort of... Would if, we... If that's not a dangerous thing to do. Otherwise, the greyhound with a mane to make it look like a horse will become the official dog, dog of, of the, the horse race. race. You mentioned we might have two guys in a horse suit. Yep. Would we accept one person as a chess piece? Not. Oh, as a knight. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, so and while we're on the topic of knights, we also would like someone in a full suit of armor to yep. race. So bearing in mind, those will be the animals and and people racing. And in the we'll race work and out and the animals gonna... next week, but we'll... it's all about the track. We need a track for now, but it'll yeah. be handicapped, so it'll be actually exciting to see. Maybe you know a donkey could win. The question on those facts, yep. thirteen ten sixty C number. By the way, there'll be camping facilities. Is we'll try and get someone to sing the national anthem. We'll try and get a big name guest. Well, but... medium. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> That's Let's... Not... Go too big. Let's. I mean, ideally big. I'm just looking at it here. It produces. We can say that there will be a camping ground. Yep. We will, thumbs up. We're gonna have. We'll have like a marquee area. Toilets. Toilets. Yep. So there'll be. Yep. That's. We'll have a marquee, exclusive marquee area that people won't be necessarily allowed into because mm-hmm. that's exclusive. But that'll be there for you to look at. Yep. If, if you go, <laughs> that's nice. Food. Are we gonna have shops and food up there? Or? Be, we'll get food trucks. Good. Okay. We'll encourage all food trucks within a 200-kilometer radius to converge on the track. <laughs> okay, sure. So, we're hoping that they say yes, but yep. we'll, we're guaranteeing a call out to food trucks. Yeah. It's pretty good. Um, it'll be a weekend event. Can we say that? Certainly, Sunday will be huge. So, so race day you can come, the you can come early, set up, yeah. and get ready for the race. And you know? look around the town, too. It's a, it's a tourism boom for the town. Whatever town that is, yep. the Monday. Knowing that, are you in? Who's interested? Thirteen ten sixty. Are you are you willing to commit to come? <laughs> yeah. Given that we don't know where it is yet, we're looking for a little bit of you build your bridge from your side of things. <laughs> we're building our side of the bridge from our side of things. Can we meet in the middle and sight unseen? Amy, are you in? I'm in. Great, Great. Amy. Awesome. Ha- how many people are you going to come with? Who's going to do a Lone Ranger? I reckon there's about six of us. Yep. Yep. Great. Um, Amy, what kind of job do you have? Are you, are you at uni or are you, or you working? I work for Quest Departments. Right. Are they, they, have time are, off. Are they aware that you're going to have to take the Monday off? Well, coincidentally, I've got annual leave over that time because my birthday's the following week. That's so why we did it. Just, yeah. It's too perfect. <laughs> That's why we did it for you, Amy. <laughs> okay, Amy, well done. Thank you for your commitment. Nick also joins us. Nick, Ahoy, gentlemen. Ahoy, Ahoy to Nick. You. Whereabouts are you calling from, Nick? Uh, I'm uh, parked on the side of the road. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. But like, what state are you in? Western Australia, or are you, are you in Perth, no, no, Adelaide, Victoria, Victoria, Victoria? Okay. Victoria, okay. So, Nick, you're making a commitment here. I think I'm pretty close. Yeah. Uh, just to explain, our our soccer club didn't have an end of season soccer trip. Oh, uh, it never came through. Yep. So, so our presentation is Friday night, mm-hmm. and 
I can speak to the boys down at the club and hopefully we can get a few boys in for the trip. That would that be makes great. perfect sense. I mean, if you're in Victoria, like let's say, you know, well, what if they might, might be on Cape York Peninsula. So, so, so it might, so might be, you have, might have to really hot foot it up to the top of Australia. Nick, but how far would you be prepared to drive? Say if it was outside of Cooper Pedy, which is north of Adelaide, would yeah. you be prepared to drive? That would probably oh. be about a 12-hour drive. Oh, well, we went, we went to Adelaide last year, actually, so that would that'd work out great. Okay, Olivia. You're familiar that's, with the roads. That's the kind of commitment Fantastic. we Thank you, That's Nick. great. Olivia. Yes? Would you commit now? Would we, or we'd love something, you know, buy it off the plan. Would you like to come along? <laughs> <laughs> would you like an off-the-plan ticket <laughs> to the race that slows down the nation? Yeah, of course. Why not? Yeah, yeah. it's all right. Are you at uni, are you, Olivia? Yeah, I'm yeah, in my got, last semester. Yeah, got so. the vibe that you were, considering you just went, yeah, no, why not? Not a problem. <laughs> when's, when's exams finished for you? Uh, around November. Oh. I tell you what, it'd be great to, if you could get a few friends together. It'd be a good study trip. Exactly. It's a great stress you, you, stress relief kind yep. of trip. Go, catch a race. You cannot Collect- study properly <laughs> unless you take a four-day weekend <laughs> beforehand. Well done, Olivia. Tiny, where are you calling from? Uh, Queensland, my friend. All right, mate. Lovely, tiny. So say let's 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 look at say uh, say if it's a Wagga, hey? yep. say if we find a track and it's in Wagga, uh, in, New, in central New South Wales, would you guys be prepared? Oh yeah, to take... road trip. Yeah, you'd be happy with the road. Yeah, fantastic. How far? Yeah, man. My brother, my brother's driving. <laughs> so you're <laughs> navigating, <laughs> taking calls. Just Tiny's just going up on behalf of his brother. <laughs> who's... No, no, he's sitting next to me in the car now. Oh, you oh, guys yeah. are practicing. Great. <laughs> he goes, I'll take the week off work and we'll go down. Fantastic. Good on you, Tiny. Tiny, we'd love this. Now, Tiny, how far, and just, you can ask your brother, but don't distract him, how far would you be prepared to drive? Say if we end up near Kalgoorlie, um, over in, yeah, in, yeah, Western, yeah, Australia. That, Western Australia. Would you go across the Nullarbor for it, Tiny? We get would we go over to Western Australia, brother? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> That's Thank the spirit. Thanks, Tony. Well, listen, be listening tomorrow, mate. We hopefully will have the track. Gosh. And I, and it's good to know that people are willing to drive across the Nullarbor for it, Ando, because it'll, yeah. look, we'll hopefully have it in a spot that's accessible. Mm. I mean, you know, if you pick, I was going to say, it's accessible to everyone. That's going to be tough yeah. because uh, yeah, if well, it's near someone, it's going to be far away from someone else. But, but there are flights. There are cars. There really are, mate. And look, <laughs> yeah. it's I've I've just from the short list, mm. I'm so excited by some of these towns. Yeah. I pledge that we will have the announcement on tomorrow's show. <laughs> I think we decided that yesterday. I pledge it yesterday, but it sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> <That's okay, Shady. laughs> just in case. That's the trumpet. We always play. As we mentioned, fantastic furniture. And I'm going to start. <laughs> and before you we go be- into any store, <laughs> you'll hear that trumpet. <laughs> and it actually uh, signifies, Sam, the fact that we've got the race that slows down the nation. A race that a few people committed to yesterday, no matter where it is in Australia, God, which I we love- really appreciate. It's people show we love the fact you're getting behind it. That was the moment, wasn't it, where you mm. felt like, okay, this thing is happening. A mm. dream is slowly crystallizing into mm. a reality. All Andy and I wanted was mm. the opportunity for us to have our own horse race, host yeah. the people's race. Yep. The idea being we find a racetrack somewhere in Australia. There's got to be one. Mm. Got to be a racetrack that's not being used the day before the Melbourne Cup. Probably going to be in a country town somewhere. Mm. We come in, we get the lease on the track for, let's say, a month. I yep. don't know how long we need to lease it for, but mm. we talk to the committee. They give us the lease. We make it the people's racetrack. Everyone in Australia flocks to this town. We host our horse race. One race, any horse-like horse, not just elite horses, mm. donkeys, donkeys tails. Yep. If you're a horse-like animal, mm-hmm. you can be submitted to run and it'll be a handicapped event. It'll it be a staggered be. start. And the race, will it's not going to stop the nation. That's what the Melbourne Cup does, but yeah. it will slow it down. Hey, so many people have suggested country towns and tracks. It's beautiful. So many of those country towns have said, no way. Well, the tracks are used or <laughs> a lot of <laughs> few interested. people have suggested towns. We've yeah. then rung the town and, go, mm. and gone, what's your racetrack like? And they've said, we don't have one. <laughs> yeah. And we've figured out that people have just suggested towns <laughs> they like, yeah, maybe right. thinking it could be some sort of street race, <laughs> some sort of horse drag, drag race, race down yeah. the main yeah. track. No, we do need, just for the horse's well-being yeah. as well, as well as the tradition of, of holding a horse race, we would like, like it to track. be an actual horse track rather than just horse-like animals driving go-karts around. There are a few front runners though, yeah. of places that uh, would be happy to have us. We've done a lot of work behind the scenes here, a lot of sifting, a lot of getting ready because... I'm going to go through a few of those front runners today. Trying, yeah. trying, to get, trying to find the track is obviously not easy, mm. but when we, I feel like once we get the track and we know where it's going to be, 
Then we've got a beacon. We were impressed with one in Queensland. Gainda is yeah, its name. Really and, beautiful. And uh, and this is a lovely little pre-recorded package to really set the mood for this particular camp. No, I think this is live. Oh, live. Live. This is live, guys. Gainda is the oldest city in rural Queensland, situated on the picturesque Burnett River. There's a population of about 3,000 people there, about an hour and a half west of Bundaberg. We're about three and a half hours north of Brisbane. That's Matt. He's part of the major industry in Gainda. We're famous for citrus fruits, oranges, mandarins, lemons and grapefruits. But the race that slows down the nation may not be the biggest event the town sees. Every two years we have an orange festival. So Friday night we have a, um, a ball, which is where the Orange Festival Queen's dub sort of thing. The Orange Festival Queen. Just the sort of celebrity to be seen swanning around the birdcage at our race course. The Orange Festival Queen, it's a sought after and highly prized position in town. But as Rachel points out, oranges aren't the only product of Gainda. As the original home of the Queensland Derby, they have some racing pedigree. Carl's the jockey, his family comes from Gainda. So we've got a bit of a jockey connection there. Gainda, home of the Big Orange and maybe the race that slows down the nation. We love our horse racing out there. How's that, Ando? Wrapped to the Big Orange. I mean, I mean that is a huge draw card. If we yeah. can be in a town that has a big something, yeah. that is phenomenal. And Come for the race, stay for the Orange. Come for the Orange, stay for the race. Now, we know because they have the Orange Festival each year. Yep. Uh, we did a bit of research. We found out the mascot for the Orange Festival is Gay Dan. No, it's not. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> mascot for the Orange Festival. Oh, right. Yeah, it wears a big suit with a big big orange on his head. <laughs> I didn't know this. Didn't you find that out? No. Oh, right. Maybe I wasn't talking to you about it. Yeah, Gay Dan. He's a hero. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. But that's what no, I was saying. Maybe just... Gay Dan can come down and start the race for us. Yeah. Well, that would be incredible. Well, he's... A, I mean, I haven't met him. There's also... Um, but I'd love, to, I'd love to have him as part of it. Um, and as we just heard, obviously, there's a, a kind of queen of the Orange Festival ham, and that'd be a big ticket item if we could have... We don't want to make it too heavily orange based because <laughs> yeah. it is still a horse race yep. but it but yep. to, if we could have the queen and gay down it would be a nice nod to the local orange <laughs> growing and maybe the horses could do a parade in front of the big orange <laughs> yeah um again i'm nervous it's becoming too citrus heavy but you have to embrace the town you're in um what we what we've heard from uh the people uh there ham is is a lot of good news yeah um about this particular town but that's their own town. Of course, they're going to give it a bit of a shining and rose-coloured glasses. Because at the, the moment, this has a bit of an Olympic bid feel about it, doesn't mm. it? Yeah. Now, yeah, of course, Russia is going to get up and say, mate, Moscow all the way mm. for the Olympics. Wouldn't it be better to have people that just know about it but mm. aren't necessarily from there or have maybe had a little experience? Yep. So, 131060... Either A, have you been to Gainda yep. in Queensland, or B, have you gone nowhere near it, mm. but you like the sound of it? You're a vibe. Would you like the race that slows <laughs> down the nation to be in Gainda? How come? Or? Or do you have first-hand experience of the town, but you don't necessarily live there? The other thing is, Hammond, you don't have to ring up just positive. We're saying... Oh, negative. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. If they, do you have reservations you about... big orange. Maybe you're allergic to oranges. <laughs> this would be an absolute <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> Gainda is the town. 131060. Karina, what's your connection to Gainda? Uh, guys, I went to high school in Gainda till um, year nine. Yep, beautiful. Um, how would you recommend it to people? Good town. Oh, uh, you've you've got to go there. It's it's awesome. Yeah. How big's the orange, Karina? Because um, um, I know yeah. it's got a big orange, but I, I I just looked it up and it seemed like I was only kind of the height of two and a half people. Oh, I've also had a look. I'd say it's seven meters. It, how- it'd be the height of a house. Yeah, it's big enough. How, how I mean, compared to a normal orange, Andy, that's pretty big. <laughs> 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 Certainly the biggest orange you'd ever say. Hey, um, Karina, I just had a quick squeeze at the uh, the big orange here online. Um, t- it's got doors in the front of it. What do they keep in the orange? Uh, it's just all, it's, I think they use it for tourism stuff now. Just it's storage. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, like, what Sandwich boards and stuff. <laughs> no, like, can someone go inside? It doesn't look like it. Yeah. No, no, like, it doesn't look like a good well, tour. Well, there's no windows. There, well, there's no windows. <laughs> what are you doing walking around it's the inside? bigger of- than the big mango in Bowen. Oh, <laughs> cop that, Bowen. And that's pretty good because usually mangoes are bigger than oranges. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. it's trumped it. All right, well, great. Karina, okay. So if, with, with regards to fruit size, <laughs> what, what I'm saying, Ando, is on the front of the big orange, I mean, you'll you have a look at this. If There's no windows or anything in the big orange, so it would be silly to do a tour around inside it. Well, Karina's saying... it's the size of a big shed. 
Yeah, <laughs> not yeah. even a big shed. <laughs> See what's inside an orange. Maybe just a couple of pips. <laughs> I just think. I just think it's probably just an A-frame and a trestle table for when they need to have an event. Mandy, you've also been to Gainda. Well, my boss's brother owned the pub in Gainda, the Grand. Owns it or owned it? He just sold it. Can you believe that? Oh, and well. they're moving back to the Gold Coast. But my bus used to go up there all the time and help him at the big events, like you were saying, the Orange Festival, yep. which was always over the long weekend of June, and they loved it. Do you reckon if we do the race that slows down the nation there, Mandy, it would be bigger than the Orange Festival? Of course it would. <laughs> okay, thank you. Andy, actually, you guys will be there, so everyone will go. But it it's, seems like it's a pretty tough thing to knock off because yeah, everyone Fest, seems to love it. the Orange yeah. Festival. Um, Mandy... If you had to nitpick, if you do you know of any of the disadvantages? We're only hearing positive things about Gainda, but we're worried that... It's a bloody long way. Yeah, okay. that's... Yeah, Not that's if you live in Gainda. <laughs> <laughs> if you live... It's actually super convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mandy. Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> Jessica, is it a Hi. positive or negative vibe towards Gainda in Queensland, the small town that could host the race that slows down the nation? I think it'll be fantastic. Okay, why? Have you been there, Jess? <laughs> Uh, I grew up there when I was little. I was actually crowned Little Miss Gainda. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Jess. I didn't recognise your voice all growing up. <laughs> um, now, was was the crowning done at the Orange Festival? Oh, I forget. I was so young, but okay. I remember Agro presented me with a little <laughs> sash. <laughs> oh, so Royal royalty in Gainda. So, for people who don't know, Agro's cartoon connection, Agro was a Muppet or a puppet type yeah. figure. Made very, a very angry young very angry. puppet made of carpet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, how and, and, had, and had a little bit too much of a sexual crush on his co-host. Yes, true, true. <laughs> Jessica, um, how did the town deal with a celebrity as big as the Agro in the town? Can they handle celebrities? Because we think, we're throwing around earlier today, maybe we get like some acts to play some music there or Jeez, something. Can we get Agro? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Je- Jessica, do you reckon the town would be cool if we, if we got some acts to come and play at the, at the race that slows down the nation? I think they'll be cool, calm and collected. They'll be fantastic. Well, they're used to Agro. <laughs> yeah. so could, yeah. we get, could we get you back to defend your title? Too big. Oh, I guess maybe. No, nah, nah, Jessica, you'd be too big oh, for the little you, miss. Yeah, but you, you again, six-year-old. Put, 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 <laughs> put your shoes on your knees. <laughs> Jessica, thank you. Sean, is, it, is there any doubts as to whether we should have the race that slows down the nation in Gainda in Queensland? Ahoy, boys. Ahoy, Ahoy Sean. Well, as I was saying, I went through there and got a steak and cheese pie mm-hmm. on my way to um, work. And I'll tell you what, I've been having dreams about it ever since. Right. Oh. This is the first example we've heard of a non-orange-based uh, food <laughs> being served in well, Gainda. Oranges are great, yeah. but are. steak and cheese pie, that'll bring, you know, fans from all over Australia, I think. Is that, was, that the, was that with the bakery or was it the pub? It was at the bakery, yep. so I couldn't tell you the name, but... Uh, I don't think there's that many of them. <laughs> I mean, we'd find it. We, we'd could, find we could, it. could comb the town and <laughs> fairly confident we'd find it. Okay, thank you, Sean. I mean, there's That's four we, ticks. There's four ticks. We haven't had well, The only real word. cross came from you, Ando, with a dubious... Um, Just unsure the of concern the... of the height of the orange. And that was quashed. I'm, I'm now I'm happy with it. I think the, the only concern came from you is whether the tour inside the, uh, the orange is <laughs> might, worthwhile your money. It might not be. You might not feel a whole afternoon. We'll go at the through a few more of the front runners. Uh, another one next hour. It's Amy Shady driving you home. <laughs> Hame, exciting times because on November 2nd, we're going to have the race that slows down the nation. The day before the Melbourne Cup stops the nation. Yeah. We'll absolutely draw it to a dawdle. We'll put, yeah, we'll bump the brakes. Pump, pump, pump. Yeah, and so, nice and slow into the corner. Yeah. <laughs> and our race that slows down the nation is a single race, but it's a carnival feel. And yeah. the, the, the any horse-like animal can enter. That's our criteria. And it'll be handicapped, a staggered start. The day itself sounds like it'll be an absolute ripper, if I may say, Ando. Yeah. <laughs> the, what we do need is one of the critical ingredients for a horse race, mm. which is the track. Yep. Now, to get a track, obviously... The big city tracks are not easy to rent. They're no. usually taken by large corporate sponsors. Yep. That's why we've expanded our search out into the country to hopefully find a country racetrack that's not doing a lot that day. Mm-hmm. And if needs be, we lease it for a couple of months or, you know, whatever, enough time for us to legally be able to call it the Hamish Dandy Turf Club and therefore give membership to everyone listening to the show so everyone can come to the race. We had a great one in Queensland, Ham. The one we're about to focus on now, another front runner, because they seem interested. Yep. 
is in Victoria, about an hour away from the New South Wales border, so really close yeah. at the top there. Splitting the diff. Wedderburn is its name. The Victorian goldfields town of Wedderburn is located about 200 kilometres northwest of Melbourne. Population about seven or 800. It's a little gold mining town. Found a bit of gold over the years. That's Ken Tonkin. He's one of the characters in town, but he's not alone. Walk up the main street, mate. You'll meet quite a few characters in this town. Robbie Collins, he'd be one to meet. David Lockhart's probably one of the characters of the town. Yeah, I think he's alive. <laughs> Hang on, he might, mightn't be alive. <laughs> But alive or dead, people just can't wait to partake in Wedderburn's many attractions and festivals. We've got a fabulous museum here of of what an old supermarket used to be in the old days. Grocery store, uh, known back in those days. Uh, We have our um, steam engine rally every year. That's a pretty big event for the town. So the town is no stranger to exclusive events. Would Hamish and Andy's... uh, Hang on, there's just someone at the door. Just a moment, please. What are, what are you selling? Just in the area of the solar panels. Yeah, no, mate. Per- rent a property. Don't need them. Bye. I'm one of those door-to-door salesman crappy people. Hamish and Andy's race that slows down the nation may be the perfect addition to Wedderburn's calendar of events. It's a good little town. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wedderburn, as you've just heard, does have a museum. Population uh, of 680 or maybe 679. <laughs> yeah, that guy, the, the solar panel guy's probably left down. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the person they were. Oh, sorry, the his... person, he might be dead. <laughs> yep. Um, their solar panel... Cautious, <laughs> especially for rental properties. This is amazing, Ham. What I there's no doubt if it ends up in Weatherburn, yep. that the race will be the focus. Yes, it's, if we, a, I mean, it, a sub seven hundred person town. Yeah, you know, this will this will like, hopefully be the thing that takes the cake. I really liked Gainda yep. in Queensland, but they've got the big orange, and that <laughs> seemed to be drawing a bit of focus away from our race. Well, so much of Gainda's, you know, vibe yeah. was citrus based. Yeah, and it seems like all we're competing with here is the steam engine <laughs> rally, rally, and the museum <laughs> of a grocery of a store. grocery store. So it's sounds- in my head, I, that's what I called them when I grew up. So in my head, it's like. It's a supermarket from 1991 that's just frozen in time. You can walk it's down, look at tiny teddies, and like, oh, that's, well, it's very expired, isn't it? It's well past its use-by date. It seems I'd to love me, to check out that museum. It seems to me that it closed down. Yeah. No, 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 don't clear it out. That's a museum now. <laughs> What's this? This is the car yard museum. This is the butcher's museum. Are these just, did the leases just run out? Yes. News agent's museum. 131060, though, again, it's, we've, we've heard all these great things about Wedderburn. In uh, in kind of north uh, northwestern Victoria near the New South Wales border. Yep, this is how it works, though. This is those that was the that was the rundown from the people that live there. They're all they obviously love it. Yep. Um, thirteen ten sixty. You're getting a good vibe about Wedderburn. Do you like have, the sound of it? Have you been there? Yep. Can you give any positives for it? Can you? Are there any negatives? Is there anything else that we should know about? Because yep. it seems to me <laughs> other stuff to do. Because I mean, this will be. Whilst the horse race will happen on the Monday, you know, we'll be getting there on the weekend and Mm. we'll need some stuff to do around town. It does appeal to me, Ham, that we could really own the town, though. (laughs) And we could have a steam engine if we wanted. (laughs) Yes. Ham, our race that slows down the nation, our own, the people's horse race, our own race, where it doesn't matter if you're not very good at running as a horse because you'll get a handicap start. We accept you. We're like the twilight sports of horse racing. Yeah. You only have to be a horse-like creature, too, to enter. Exactly. We're going to take a zebra, if we can get one. We'll take a donkey. Yep. Take a Shetland, who are horses, mm. but, you know, they have an inferiority complex. <laughs> uh, we mooted the idea, and it's still up in the air of a greyhound with a mane. I thought wig. Shetlands were ponies. Well, I mean, a pony's a horse, isn't it? Is it? Well, what is it if it's not a horse? Good point. I thought... Well, I thought that a pony was a different species, but you think it's a horse? I think it's just slang. Is it? Like- <laughs> Because, uh, you know, like having to bet on the ponies. Yeah, right. I mean, they're, they're, that's the horse races, isn't and, it? And that's why we're in charge of a horse race. We just know a <laughs> lot about guys, them. We are guys. We are basically the the equine masters <laughs> here. We want to hold this race, Anna, but, and we want to hold it the day before the Melbourne Cup. We want yep. wants to be the race that slows down the nation. For that, that race that stops the nation. Here's the trick. The tricky thing is we need a track, and usually a track is attached to a town, so we kind of <laughs> need them both in tandem. We're running Wedderburn. In the far north of Victoria, not too far from the New South Wales car, uh, border, yeah. we're running them under the microscope a bit here, and uh, to, to really run a fine tooth comb through the town, we know it has a grocery store museum. Yeah, from what we can understand, that's a you go into the 
museum and experience what a grocery store used to be supermarkets like. Supermarkets used to be like. <laughs> as one of the main attractions, it's a very big sort of gold prospecting town. Jeremy might be able to help us. Jeremy, Jeremy you've been to Wedderburn? Yeah, mate. How are you guys? Yeah, good, mate. Um, would um, you recommend we, it for the race that slows down the nation? I would, I would. It's a good race. There's other things to do. There's an old gold mine that you can go and walk through and maybe buy a little nugget. Yep. <laughs> There's also uh, Skinner's Flats, which you can go do some yabbing at a big reservoir. Hey, Jeremy, how come you know so much about Wedderburn? Um, I take the kids and we go up there every single Easter. We've got a block of land that we've had in the family for about 30 years probably. Oh, so we go camping. So, so, Jeremy, here's one for facilities. I mean, could it handle a 1,000 people? Yeah, it can, it can. And they do have a – the racetrack that's there is, is a nice one. They've done it well. Okay, uh, all the other right. towns from around come in. Yep. And, uh, yeah, they, they do host big events. So, so is it a grass track or a dirt track? Uh, it's a dirt track. Okay. That's good. Yeah, good. That okay. means it'll be, they can't not be in good in nick condition. when we get there. Yeah, exactly. Jeremy, who are the other big towns around? Um, Charlton. Oh, that, uh, yeah. that's, an, that's the one past it. That's a big town. That's got the hospital. So if you need to go there, that's, <laughs> okay. that's yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll pull some St. John's guys down from there in case the two guys in a horse suit overheat. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, you were there 30 minutes ago. Yeah, I was. I, just, I went to the toilet. So you it drove there? Burn. <laughs> so you, yeah, I did. Not, you didn't drive there specifically for their toilets. I mean, they, they had no. great toilets. Okay. <laughs> sure. No, I was passing through. I'm on my, I was on my way to Melbourne. What, so. was, what was the vibe like there? So. Oh, very friendly. The food works looks excellent. Okay. Did you, see, did you see the museum that's an old supermarket? Um, well, I saw it. An IGA growth, but I don't think I saw the museum. No, that's a, that's a future supermarket. That's a future museum. Yeah. Uh, that's, that'll be a museum in 20 years' time. Yeah. So if turn around and go back, you missed out on a wonderful attraction. Would you like to have the race that slows down the nation there? Um, yeah, well, it wouldn't be too bad. I mean, it's pretty close to home, but, I mean, my town's got a better race course if you want to look there. Where's, oh, where's your, your town? town? Um, it's actually Minyip. It's where the Flying Doctors has filmed all those years ago. <laughs> okay, that's so that's too. another one to add yeah. to this. Thanks, so. Thanks. Yeah. Well done. Diane. Have you Diane, been... yeah. Oh, sorry, Diane. Have you, went... have you been to Wedderburn? Yeah, we go there probably every second weekend. My husband actually gold detects down there. Oh, wow. wow. Great. Okay. How's he got... What's it like down there? Still got some gold? Yeah, he got in February this year. He got an eighty-seven ounce nugget, which was valued at one hundred and seventy-five. Well, we sold for one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. <laughs> well, hang on, one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. How close to the surface was it? Um, about uh, twenty inches down. That is incredible, well, dear. That's our prize money. I was about to say... That's have, our prize money. We just, we you just in, say you've got 20 minutes up in the mountains with a gold check to <laughs> keep half of what you find. I was about to say you're annoyed that your husband's taken up this hobby, but oh, obviously not. Paid for itself a hundred times over. Nearly a quarter of a mil. Well done, Deanne. Well, that's that's a nice thing for people country. To, to go. I mean, if, if people have to take the day off work to get there... You pay for itself. Pay for holiday <laughs> basically pay for itself. <laughs> Catherine... Wrap this up for us. Have you been to Wedderburn, Catherine? Howdy, boys. I went to Wedderburn a couple of weeks ago for a work conference, would you believe? Wow. All right. What was There's the... one hotel. Yep. Um, we did a walking tour, and I've got to say, the highlight was that grocery store museum. <laughs> <laughs> this is that, that grocery store museum is a bright light, and I'm a moth. I'm very interested. I, <laughs> I took photos. Oh, good. Oh, don't um, spoil it before we get there. Frozen in... Frozen in time, uh, so, and I've got to say, the ladies who run it do a really great job of, uh, of uh, I guess, sharing the passion. Hey, Catherine, what, did you confirm my suspicions that it was just a, just it was just a grocery store that went out of business, and they've now slapped a museum logo on the front of it? <laughs> it's a little bit more than that. That's I've good. got to say. Okay. Um, it, there's quite a few levels. They even have um, a cellar room that's frozen in time, mm-hmm. and a whole lot of sort of, um, I guess, ye olde artifacts. Okay, okay. Hey, Catherine, is it enough? Like, if people <laughs> if people don't want to come to, say, the race that slows down the nation, is it enough of a tourist attraction to say, hey, come for the, for the grocery museum and potentially stay for the race? Absolutely. I oh, think God. where to burn's the best bet. <laughs> great. Wow. Okay. I love it, Catherine. Thank you. Oh, well, I mean, that's another great alternative, isn't Jeez, it? It's hey? good. And you're right, Andrew, a town of 600 people, like, We've got their attention. I just we move feel, in, we take over. Again, not to take any gloss of we'll get the, the grocery store museum, but I mean, that's, we did ask, didn't we? We said, whatever town we choose, we'd love the mayor to declare a day off. 
It's only fair. Just feel like we could throw a weight around in Wedderburn. <laughs> I, I think you're right. Drew Barrymore, Tony Collette well, are going right. to join us after this. Are we going to have the decision tomorrow? Let's, yeah, let's sleep on I it. Because I know today was pledged. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I feel like too many good ones are still coming through. Yeah, well. we'll I'm re-pledging, yeah. which is almost more exciting than an initial <laughs> pledge. I re pledge <laughs> we'll have the actual town selected by tomorrow. Hey, Mr. Eddie. Hey, it's very exciting. November second, biggest day in racing. Biggest day of the so biggest day of the calendar for Australia. Yep, because we are going to hold the race that slows down the nation, the People's Horse Race. Mm. And the reason why we love this horse race compared to others, it's not just about good elite running horses, thoroughbreds. No, although we will have excellent horse like animals. Yeah, we are opening it to any type of horse. Yep. If you can... Is it, I mean, a donkey... Donkey's donkey is not, not a horse. But it's a horse-like animal. It's a horse-like creature. <laughs> yeah. Could be a horse from a distance. <laughs> yeah. Good from far. <laughs> so if you could be mistaken as a horse from a distance... Yep. That it and, pretty, and I, pretty much qualifies you to be in our race. You know what? I actually learned what 2020 meant, means the other day. Hmm. Uh, it means you can get... I think it's like, you know... 2020 20, vision. Yeah, 2020 vision. It means from 20 feet away, yeah. you can... You're accurate. To like, you can read twenty characters on those eye test things. Right, pretty sure it's something like that. So <laughs> it means twenty feet away, right? Yeah, yeah. I reckon our rule should be from a hundred meters. Yeah. Whatever we've got in the race looks like a horse. Yeah. So that's the way a donkey's in, a Shetland's in, because yep. you could be confused by the perspective. Yep. Two men in a horse suit are definitely in. Yep. Hundred meters away, and the sun is setting behind the animal. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's quite difficult, difficult to make to out the shape. You're eligible, and uh, it'll be a staggered start. Um, we'll try and handicap it correctly, yeah. so they all try and finish at the same time. That's the thing: two men in a horse suit might only have to run fifty meters. Yeah. Where if we do have a champion thoroughbred, yeah. that might have to cover fifteen hundred. Exactly. <laughs> I think that would be unfair. Fifty meters versus fifteen hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Two men horses. It's pretty hard to run in those things. Remember, the guy in the back's running bent over. Yeah, know, and right. and the rule will be... meters. Hey. This guy's got a K and a half on yeah. a horse. Horses are very fast. I know. Faster than faster than one man bent over, and the other thing is if you're in the if you're in the two man horse suit, yeah. it's got to finish in one piece because <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've I've been present at a few runnings of you know I've been yeah. present where there's been guys in horse suits. Yeah. What happens ninety nine percent of the time mm. when you're asked to run in the horse suit is the guy <laughs> at the front thinks he's going slow enough for the guy down the run behind. Remember, you're bent over at the waist ninety degrees. Yeah. Usually, it's almost impossible to run. Yeah. Front half usually gets jack of it and starts <laughs> splitting away. Yeah. It's almost always a uh, two halves of the horse finishing together. Which usually the back half falls over and the front half finishes upright. Which is rare to see in horse racing. <laughs> You'll <laughs> never front, see that in thoroughbred the racing. The front half falls. Very rare for a horse, <laughs> horse to have such powerful front legs that it will tear away from the back of its body. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's good because it's the safety of horses that we're worried about as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Hey, and if um, any of the horse, and if any of the real horses look like that happening, We'll, we'll ban him from the race because we yeah. don't want that happening. <laughs> hey, and we needed to find a track. Yep. That's the so thing. We know about the race. It, we went rural because we knew that they're less likely to be in use and cheaper for us to lease. We understand that this is a bit of a pie in the sky idea because what we want is just to, to essentially have our own horse racing mm. track, which is not an easy thing to just walk up and grab. So we needed to find... A, a track that was for lease, but B, a town that would allow us to take over their town for the day. Another track joined the front runners. Another town joined the front runners today. Balaclava it was in South Australia. Balaclava, South Australia, or as the locals call it, Balak, is on the banks of the Wakefield River. So it's a, a small country town about an hour north of uh, Adelaide in South Australia. A uh, population of roughly about 3,000 people. The race course is home to the prestigious Balaclava Cup each year, which in 2006 was famously attended by Australian astronaut Dr Andy Thomas. An event that would have been front page news in the local Plains producer, which Louise writes for. So it's a town that every Everyone knows what's going on. I write the gossip column here, but each week we have a look-alike of a local um, person with a famous celebrity. Colonel Sanders, KFC, looks like a local bloke called Steve Renshaw. Who needs real celebrities when we could have marquees full of look-alikes? Another girl called Ashley Starr, who looks like Loz off in the hot plate you know, in the cooking show. Balaclava is also home to another famous race. The keg roll, the annual keg roll. Every year you get to out on the racetrack. 
track and they get a, a Cooper's keg each and they've got to roll up and down the track and you win a heap of beer and a tour of the beer factory uh, in Adelaide uh, if you uh, if you win that. And so that's all a coveted prize. Balaclava presents the race that slows down the nation with the keg roll warm-up race. That's a nice ring to it. I'm actually a pro keg roller. Amateurs only, of course. Les would be ineligible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very interesting, isn't it? I feel Balak. like Balak, Balak, Balaclava or Balak, as the locals call it. I love the fact that they're running lookalikes. And Jack pointed out beautifully in that piece there. I mean, the races in general, if you think about the races over in England and the Kentucky mm. Derby in the US, it's all about big names being there. Well, the Royal Ascot, yeah. the, Queen, the Queen. No bigger celeb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Queen. I don't think she's coming to the Melbourne Cup. No. But Queen, if- I think uh, Levanza tried to get her, <laughs> but they're getting Snoop. <laughs> but it'd be nice, Ham. If we could have a Colonel Sanders look alike and a girl looks like Loz off the hot plate. The two biggest <laughs> the two other celebrities <laughs> behind the, the Queen. In the world, both that already reside in Balaclava. 13, 10, 60. I mean, that's, their, that's the locals talking their own town up. And this is what we did on yesterday's show. We had two other great towns featured. Mm. Essentially, if uh, you heard yesterday's show, you know the way this goes. Have you been there? Have mm. you passed through it? If you haven't been, mm. does it sound like the kind of place you want to go? Would you like the biggest horse race in the country yep. to be there? Would you grab the crew and mm. head to Balak? Yeah. Let us know. 13 10, We just heard uh, the pitch of a, a track or a town called Balaclava. It's kind of an hour north of Adelaide and South Australia. We're asking on 13 10, do you like the sound of balaclava? And wouldn't it be nice if we all wore balaclavas at the race? <laughs> It'd be hot, though, I think. That, that's okay. It's okay. We could get light ones made of silk. <laughs> Fancy <laughs> Pretty ones. Pretty ones, yeah. Like, like, instead of hats, which is what you wear to the horse races, everyone wears a balaclava. Pretty daunting for the <laughs> town. Oh, yeah. Especially, <laughs> everyone if, you comes to especially town. if you didn't know what was going on. <laughs> uh, Kane, you, you haven't been there, but you like the sound of it. Yeah, I live in Queensland and I'm willing to drive to Balaclava before Gainda because I went to Gainda once and got swooped by a magpie, so the place is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay, so that's good. a bit of a one, you run a zero tolerance <laughs> policy, Kane, one strike and you're out with magpies? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, fair call as so well, Kane. So, Kane, um, just doing the, I mean, the loose maths of like, say, Balaclava being one hour north of Adelaide versus where, where are you in Queensland, Kane? Oh, I'm probably. Three and a half hours from Gaindo. I'm on Coolum Beach. So yep, yep, yep. So you yeah. would, you would feel be you, some twenty twenty. I reckon twenty six hours to get to Balaclava. Um, yeah, happy to make the trip. Yeah, I'll leave work Friday. We'll be there by Monday. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Thanks, Kane. Thanks, Kane. Great work, and, Kane. And no reports of swimming magpies Balaclava. Not as a single yet. one. Andrew on thirteen ten sixty Balaclava. Yeah. Have you been there? Oh, I haven't been there, mate. But oh, sorry, I have been there. I used to live near there. Okay. <laughs> His story changed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and it's very close to Snowtown. Ooh. Okay. Well, then let's forgive them for that. I mean, people, rebrand eventually. If people don't know what Snowtown, you don't know. Was. You don't need to know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's some, some horrific. Bodies thing. in barrels, maybe. Yes. Okay, yes, Andrew. Andrew we're, this is we're trying to go for more of the positive side of <laughs> the area. Okay. So. All right. So far, people have been ringing up and just dissing at the moment. Well, so far... A diss on Gainder? Well, Balaclava has, annoying, sco- scored, my favorite. has scored a point because Gainder has scored a negative. Yes. And, and then, that uh, wasn't 100% an endorsement from Andrew. Lockie, have you been to uh, Balaclava? Never been to Balaclava, but mm. I would love to come to the race that slows down a nation. Yep. yep. Right. Whereabouts are you living, Lockie? Uh, I'm in Melbourne. Yeah. And we reckon... We've got a group of mates who reckon we can add to their celebrity lookalikes. Oh, who could you bring? Oh, I could bring Bradley Cooper, Arnold Schwartz, and our Kramer from Friends. <laughs> Hang on. Kramer <laughs> from Friends. I don't remember the crossover episode between Friends and Seinfeld. <laughs> Kramer from Seinfeld. Oh, Kramer from Seinfeld. <laughs> no, no, no. I love it, Lockie. <laughs> well, I guess... That's one of the best calls we've had all year. <laughs> Schwarzenegger's tough. I mean... Yeah, he... Schwarzenegger, we need to get a hairdresser to dye his hair. So, but is he, is he like, <laughs> massive? Is that massive? Yeah. Yeah. Is he big? I mean, Schwarzenegger yeah, was missed. Yeah, hey, we wouldn't bring a small Schwarzenegger. No. <laughs> <laughs> Lockie, hopefully it is somewhere near you because just hearing who oh, you've got would to awesome. offer, wouldn't would it you be, be great if oh. we could have a birdcage area, like a, a VIP marquee that's just <laughs> yeah. for lookalikes? We, well, we would be asking for a private marquee where, like, VIPs only. We don't. 
and don't like, and, and, and I tell you the tell you the way you should be allowed into the VIP marquee. You walk up, and the, <laughs> security, the security guard on the door if says, he knows you, Arnold Schwarzenegger, come on in. Yep. If he can't place it, yeah. you're not allowed in. Great. Hey, Lockie, would you be prepared to drive all the way up to Gainder if we hold it in Queensland? You being a Melbourneite. Oh, of course. We, then, if anyone needs a lift, we'll chuck them in. Okay, okay, we great. need that celebrity lookalike power you've yeah. got, Lockie. Thank you, mate. I love our VIP <laughs> section. <laughs> Amy, you live 30 minutes away from Balaclava in South Australia. What can you tell us about I, it? I used to. I actually live all the way in New South Wales now, but I'm from a town called Kadena on the York Peninsula. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. So uh, we used to go to Balaclava quite regularly, and I was just telling the guys that um, it would be excellent because there's stacks of parking because there is literally nothing else around. Okay, 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 good, good. That is a nice spin to put on an empty town, isn't it? <laughs> There's a heck of a lot of parking. <laughs> a lot of parking. Amy, thank you very much. Hey, I feel like we've got our top three. We do have our top three. We've got Wedderburn in Northern Victoria, Gainder in Queensland. Mm-hmm. We've now got Balaclava in South Australia. I like the look of likes of Balaclava. Well, it's- We're going through them with a fine tooth cone. I did pledge on today's show that we would have a result. Let's do it. Let's 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 choose. There's one more piece of information I'm waiting to come through on Ando. Give me until just after five. Yep. Because I've got I'm chasing something mm. without wanting to give too much away, I'm chasing something from the mayors of one of the towns. Okay. Who's left a message I've got to get back to him. Tame Shnandy. Tame. It's time, Ando. We decided this week that we want to get into <laughs> the horse carnival business, Ham. And we want to win it. We want to win at carnivals, yep. and what we've decided to do is host the people's horse race. Mm. We want to try and get the lease, buy if we have to, but lease is cheaper, yeah. uh, a, a track somewhere in Australia. Yep. Uh, now, we want sort of, we, obviously, we're looking at the lower end of tracks. We yep. can't we can't grab a raw Randwick or something, but... For the ones that have been suggested, though, we think your high end, just under... A um, lot more heart than the, city, than the city tracks. Yeah. We need to get a track, and we also need a town that's welcoming to have us and hopefully as many people as can come from Anyone all over Australia. Anyone can come from all over well, Australia. Well, up to 20 million people. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 22. It'd be about 20. Probably. Yeah. I know, you need, I mean, a two million, we'll have to leave two million people in the cities as a skeleton crew <laughs> to run, <laughs> run critical services. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of every single person yeah, in Australia true. converge Sorry, on being, the town. I was being silly. So, maximum 20 million person <laughs> event. Yep. So we can have the race. Are we we capping it? <laughs> We're capping it at 20 mil. <laughs> yeah, okay. We want to have our horse race the day before the Melbourne Cup. Yep. So that Monday, the 2nd of November. And the, the thing about our race, it's all horse-like animals. Yep. Donkeys, mules, two guys in a horse suit, maybe. There might be a knight in there. There may be a Clydesdale. There might be a great racing horse, but it'll be a staggered start. So hopefully- Everyone's got a shot. Everyone's got a shot at winning it. Hey, three great tracks became available. Yep. One in South Australia, one just uh, or close to the New South Wales border in Victoria, and one in Queensland. If you missed it, let's have a track. Let's have a track down memory lane here. <laughs> With those. First up was Gainder in rural Queensland, the home of the Big Orange. Every two years we have an orange festival. So Friday night we have a, um, a ball where the Orange Festival Queens dub sort of thing. The Orange Festival Queen, it's a sought after and highly prized position in town. Not to be outdone, Wedderburn in northwest Victoria played their big attraction card. We've got a fabulous museum here of, of what an old supermarket used to be in the old days grocery store uh, known in, back in those days. They're pretty big for the town. And finally, Balaclava in South Australia has the celebrity element. Each week we have a lookalike of a local um, person with a famous celebrity. Colonel Sanders, KFC, looks like a local bloke called Steve Renshaw. Another girl called Ashley Starr who looks like Loz off in the hot plate, you know, the cooking shows. The Big Orange, the Grocery Store Museum, or the town full of lookalikes. Who will host Hamish and Andy's race that slows down the nation? There were, of course, so many other aspects that we examined of each town as we went through. All, we, we, all fantastic. All yeah, fantastic. And I mean, we heard today a uh, negative um, against Gainder. Mm. Uh, we had a guy on earlier in the show that had been swept by a magpie there. When he went there once. He was not uh, keen on going back. And I want to say to the people of Gainder, that didn't dissuade me from picking you guys in your big orange. Now, hang you, though. And I have to say, the people of Gainder, all the bribes you were sending, it helped by the IOC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, a string of pearls for the missus and private school fees for the kids. <laughs> certainly made me see the town in a different light. <laughs> hey, 
You've been asking me. I mean, I, I've been su- suggesting one to you saying, hold off. Yep. The, for some reason. I love them all. Mm-hmm. I love them all. Yep. Where's your heart lying? A little bit with with Gainder. Yep. I don't have to say. The Orange the orange Fest. Um, yep. I mean, they're all great. I mean, the museum in, in Wedderburn uh, of so just good. a grocery. And then the lookalike contest. I mean, they all have such great Bearing qualities. But I, mind- again, I, if I had to pick the citrus... How far ahead that percentage was? Because for me, it is. It's sort of it's Wedderburn, yep. which I love. It's a, it'd, be, it'd be a, a thirty, a thirty-one, thirty-one. Yeah, you know, twenty-eight. <laughs> no, split. Does that make sense? Oh no, it doesn't make sense. It'd be thirty-six or whatever, or whatever it is. But here's the thing: with thirty-eight, but it doesn't matter. I was fairly neck and neck with everything, yep. and then uh, got a little bit of information from the mayor of Wedderburn. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's allowed to give one day off a year, one official day off. He's unfortunately spent it already <laughs> <laughs> on the Melbourne Cup. Yeah. And he's given everyone the day off for the Melbourne Cup in the area. Right. Okay. But he's willing to give us, at, he thinks he'll, he'll be able to get it through council, yeah. an official mayoral day of celebration, which is him encouraging the whole community to take the day off. So you'd be frowned upon if uh, if you if your businesses are open. Not only that, but, but ongoing. On, a day of celebration in perpetuity for that Monday. Could we... My worry here is, and I think this is awesome, but don't we want things open for when we've got 20 million yeah, people? Yeah, they close there? during the race. Oh, great. Okay, just for the race? So between like 12 and 5, yep. shops will shut, people mm-hmm. will come down, they're going to close the main streets. Love it. It's, Love it. And oh. It's that kind it's of commitment... Them, from a town that I do like. Oh, and it's from up on high. We have a lot of the, What do you we, think? We I mean, the, I just wanted to throw that in the mix for you. Yeah. Now, that's the kind of commitment we need, isn't it? I mean, I, I believe we've for got... a town of 600. I mean, we the mayor. everyone's standing by. We've got people, the, We've got people, whether it's the mayor or someone else from each town, on hold. But mm. are, we, are we in cahoots? Yep. We, I believe we've got the mayor of, uh, of Wedderburn, Gavin, on the line. Gav? <laughs> Where are you, Gav? Where are you, fellas? I'm sitting in the bar of the pub with an audience here packed. Packed. <laughs> Gav? Oh, here, yeah, GG. We'd like to tell you that we would like to come officially to Wedderburn for the race that slows down the nation. Fair yeah, thinking we've won it. Yeah. <laughs> You've got it, Gav. You've got Australia the is coming to Wedderburn. Please. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, oh, wow. They do love a day off. <laughs> oh, mate, 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 I won't be able to hear you. Okay, oh, sorry. God, we, well, we gave away well, a car before and I didn't have that response. Jinx on me. <laughs> <laughs> what a bear. We'll chat to you Monday, Gav. Jinx get... on me, Jimmy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Gav, get, get stuck into the drinks. We'll chat to you Monday. 13, 10, 60. Oh, God, okay. imagine if we didn't get to the... <laughs> 13, 10, 60. Give us a buzz now. You, Gav. Now that you know where it is, Wedderburn, Google it. It's just an hour out of New South Wales, kind of northwest Victoria. Can you make it? Can it's you get be there amazing. on November second, thirteen ten sixty? What you are your first feelings? If you weren't sold on the town, <laughs> surely that response sells you now. I'll save you, Andy. We have just officially chosen the location, the small town, population six hundred of Wedderburn. It's pretty much on the border of uh, New South Wales, Victoria, on the Victorian side, yeah. an hour into the Victorian side. Um, the smallest of the towns. Very, very I've small noticed. town. Popular, I mean, back in the 1800s was a bit of a boom town for gold. Yep. It seems to have mostly been found by now. They've got a eucalyptus distillery and mm. a supermarket museum. So start making your plans, start everyone. Start making your way if you're walking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You live in Queensland. <laughs> um, it is on November 2nd. What time should we run the race? During uh, the show, five o'clock? Do you want to run it during the show? Makes love sense. To, I'd love to run it during the show. Five o'clock. Just after, yeah. Twilight race. Twilight race. And it's also good for European TV audiences. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. This is the stuff you have to think yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Trish on 13, 10, 60. Whereabouts are you, Trish? Ahoy, I'm in Wollongong. Ahoy, Ahoy Trish. You, Trish. And thank uh, you for using the preferred telephonic greeting of the show. Are you keen to go, <laughs> Trish? <laughs> yes, I'm so keen to go to Wedderburn. I've been to Canada and Tamworth races before. Yep. They were interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm heaps game. We're going to make it down. Trish, okay, you've just, never been to a race like this, I promise you. I mean, we haven't figured out exactly how we're going to do it, but we're going to have a very fast I horse. I want, like, clowns and face painting and some oh, she's balloon requested. animals. Okay. Um, we, we can, we, we, we can, some we balloon can animals. I don't know if they can race, just because they're dead. <laughs> It's very dangerous for balloon animals to race. Trish, they're, 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 they're all allowed. Trish, having a good time. 
Um, BYO b- balloon animals. Um, but wow, okay. That, well, I'm glad that everyone's excited. Mate, I mean, this is that, the that's, thing. That's now that we've got a track, and and Trish, bring as many of your friends. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's open to everybody. If you listen to the show, you're a member of the Turf Club. That's the fun thing. You're, it's nice to just know that you're now a member of uh, the Turf Club in Wedderburn. Sam, tell us, mate. Are you keen? Oh, yeah, I'm bloody keen, mate. Um, I, I have a broken foot. Yep. I have two broken elbows and broken neck. Yep. I was in a car accident and I'm still going to be there. <laughs> Whoa, Fantastic. Good mate. on you, Sam. We, I mean, Sam. I don't know if you can be a jockey just for safety reasons, yeah. but you can certainly uh, be a spectator. Sam, where are you calling uh, from? I'm calling from Bendigo. Bendigo, okay. So whereabouts is Bendigo? That's a town in Victoria? You're close, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, it is. It's about, oh, I think it's about 50 minutes or something, maybe oh, mate, a bit this, more. This is an easy You'll one. You'll be healed. You. You've got weeks to heal. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you can, you can I, almost walk it. I think. I'm pretty sure I'll be ready in about five weeks. I should be better. Okay. Well done, Sam. Thank you. Rachel, tell us, are you keen to get to uh, this town of Wedderburn for the big race that slows down the nation? Rach. Hey. Are you ready to, are you ready to go to Wedderburn? I am so ready. Where are you in the in the country, Rach? I'm in Williamstown. Okay, okay. also Victoria. So, yeah. but you're going to yeah. head up head up north um, now. I don't know if you're listening earlier in the show, but we did decide that we will have an exclusive marquee area. Now, yeah. we know this is the whole race is open for everyone. Um, anyone listening to the show as a member and will gain access to the track. But if you're a lookalike, if you're a celebrity lookalike, you can go to our VIP marquee. Do you look like anyone, Rach? Ah, uh, I've never been told, but I'm sure I could do something to make myself look like someone. Even plastic at a surgery, stretch, you even could at probably a... get plastic surgery within the time. It's five, yeah, four, four and a half weeks away. Don't do that <laughs> just on my call. <laughs> Please, yeah, a real tragedy for you to drop eight, <laughs> eight grand on a new nose and then Andy not let you in the market. <laughs> <laughs> also, also not convinced it's going to be that good in there. Um, uh, Kellen, you're from Newcastle. Yeah, ahoy, boys. Ahoy, ahoy you. Kellen. You ready to head down to Wedderburn oh, for the yeah. race that slows down the nation? Yeah, for sure. It's about 12 hours. So. Now, no one in the country Easy. has the day off on Monday, uh, except for the, the town, people of Wedderburn, people of Wedderburn yeah. where the mayor has just given them the day off. It's an official mayoral day of celebration. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and their day off starts from midday, I think, or just <laughs> yeah. for the race. <laughs> Um, Kellen, is it easy for you? Is it a university that you're going to put on hold? Is it uh, work um, that you just have to put a, pull a sickie for? The, yeah, I've got to pull a three-day sickie at work and another sickie for the Monday. Yep. Kellen, did, I, or, did I hear a little cough in your throat then? Yeah, yeah. Is he bad. coming down with something, Kellen? Yeah, I'll... I'll Pull some hints tonight. Let God, him know that. I hope that doesn't get any worse in the next month. Yeah, yeah don't, <laughs> don't, don't go hints so too early. Don't go too early, yeah. <laughs> yeah thank Still you. Still got a month. <laughs> thank you, Kellen. Any other suggestions for the race slows down the nation? Head, head to hamishnetty.com. Because it's slowly building now. Now we've got our VIP marquee full of lookalikes. Mm. We've certainly got people heading down for it. I'm sure we'll get music acts. And, uh, I mean, yeah, we've got the official dog. At least of our concerns. We're going to need horses. <laughs> we're gonna need, we, we don't act- we're actually putting on a race. With no competitors, the horseless at the race at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Got to imagine how popular it would be when there's horses in it. We've already got people going who don't even have any horses. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Hamish and Andy back to drive you home. What a weekend and uh, yeah. of sport. Let me run it through for you in ascending order of importance. Sure. So yet last night, um, well, AFL Grand Final has got to be the bottom rung. I'll give, you, I'll give you three things that are tied. Yeah, okay. The AFL Grand Final. Uh, the Rugby World Cup, yep. and the NRL Grand Final. They're all tied for second I'm spot. I'm putting AFL at the bottom. because Third. Yep, because the Grand Final was just boring. Two one-sided. Two one-sided. One of the best of all time. Last night was just bloody incredible. Made up for it. In the league. And it always helps when you uh, smash the palms at what they're meant to be better at. What was the number one sporting moment, though, would you say, mm. of the weekend? And I'll, inc- I'll give you a hint. Yeah. I'm going to include Friday night from about 5.30. Okay, let me have a think, let me think. Ever think. I reckon it was when mm-hmm. the race that slows down the nation, the People's Horse Race, was awarded to the small rural town of Wedderburn. That is so funny because I was not trying to lead the witness, but that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking of, Ando. <laughs> it was pretty exciting on Friday, Ham, when we it's did award the race uh, to, to Wedderburn after many great suggestions came from the people. This is the people's show, of course. We spoke to the mayor, Gavin. He, he gave the pub. town the day off. He gave the day the, town the day off. He it was in the pub when they found out. They all cheered. He the last thing we heard from him was drinks are on me, drinks are on me. We lost contact. Haven't had a chance to speak to him since. It's Irish and Andy. And home today in four weeks' time. 
amazing, isn't it? Today's, the race that slows down the nation. This is the bit where we start gathering speed yeah. to then really slow right. down the nation. Hey, my, our own very our very own horse race that uh, will take place in a town yeah. near the border of New South Wales in Victoria. We just wanted to be in on all the horse races that yeah. happen at this end of the year. Mm. It's one thing to go to them, but it can be... Yeah, it can be a lot of hassle to go to one. Maybe yeah. it's more fun to hold your own. But if you're going to hold your own race, you need a track. And yep. If you're going to get a track, it's probably not going to be a capital city. No. That's why we're heading out to the very, very, very small town. Probably one of the smallest towns in Australia. A town of only about 500 people. Yep. It's the town of Wedderburn. Oh, they'd be smaller. <laughs> I mean, there I mean this, we've been to one that only has five people. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's certainly it's, not one of the biggest towns. It's not one of the biggest towns. There would be thousands of towns bigger <laughs> yep. than Wedderburn. Or well, Hayne, on Friday is when we alerted Wedderburn yep. that they were going to be, in fact, the town where we hold the race that slows down the nation. Mayor at the time, Gavin, was at the pub when we gave the news, and this how it went down. So I'm sitting in the bar of the pub with an audience here packed. We would like to come officially to Wedderburn for the race that slows down the nation. Fair thinking, we won it. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a game. Australia, Australia is coming to Wedderburn. <laughs> Oh, I won't be able to hear Okay, sorry. We, we well, gave away well, a car before and it didn't have that response. Drinks on me. <laughs> what a bear. <laughs> God, imagine if we didn't get to <laughs> He gave away some drinks, Ham. We couldn't get back onto him. And this is the first chance we've had to, to speak to Gavin from Wedderburn, obviously the mayor of the town that's going to host the race that slows down the nation. Welcome back to the show. Good afternoon, boys. How are you? Gavin, how, we're how, terrific. How's how, Wedderburn? Um, everyone's that excited right behind this. Now, yeah, have, you, have, great you, day. have you already seen an influx of tourism in Wedderburn over the weekend? Did there seem to be more people than normal? Well, I tell you what, with the publicity you're getting, there's certainly more people talking about Wedderburn, the publicity you're giving us, and certainly uh, my emails and phone is running hot with calls from people that I'd forgotten about. Yeah, all right. uh, all Everyone right. trying to get a ticket. How many people do you reckon the small town of Wedderburn could accommodate? Well, if you wanted to just accommodate everyone at the site where we're thinking about holding the race that slows the nation... Mm. Well, we're hoping you're holding it at the racetrack. Well, we are. <laughs> that was we part are. of the deal, <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> we certainly are. Yeah. Uh, well, look, we've hosted uh, many big events there involving um, three to 4,000 people, and well, we've been able right. to do that comfortably. Yeah, so um, if you want to send us along double that, we'll handle it. Okay, good, good. Okay, Jeez, they're, not scared, all right. they're not scared there, wait a minute. No, and we're scared of nothing. We're scared <laughs> of nothing. We're, we're what we call the redbacks. We're wait. not frightened of anything. Right. Yeah, well, great. How many more team. Obviously, <laughs> you know. How many hotels or motels are there in the town? One of each. Yep, great. One Excellent. of each, but we do have a caravan park and we do have a number of recreational uh, RV-friendly sites. Yep, beautiful. And, and a large amount of open space. That, that we can use, and we're also already, I think, the committee discussing how we might be able to bus people. Yeah, on, not which, have, yeah run, can you run us through the committee? Who's on the committee? What are their names? What are their positions? Well, the, certainly the manor, manager of tourism at Loddon Shire, Robin Vella, will be on the committee. The, Good. The, 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 president of our, the current president of our football club, um, Andrew Lockhart, will be on the committee. Oh, yep. on um, the the person that's doing all the horsework for you in this, Michelle Murray, yep. who's good. actually a fully licensed um, um, thoroughbred jockey, okay. she, she'll be on the committee. Uh, we've got a, a cross-section of the whole community because have, you have to understand that for such a big event like this, mm. everybody is on deck. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, that's well, lovely. that's why they've been given the mayoral day of celebration. Uh, the only other thing we need to loosely check at this stage, and we will be in touch with you, of course, over the coming weeks, is there a, a street we could sort of, you know, fence off if we wanted to have a parade on the morning of the race? Mate, if you want the town shut down, I'll shut it down for you. Yeah, okay, thanks, thank Gav. you, Gav. There's the man okay. we need. <laughs> well, Gavin, thank you very much, mate. We, we look forward to chatting we you. We can't wait, mate. One month exactly until we're up there. Four weeks. Can't wait, Gav. We'll see you soon. Right up, boys. Cheers, mate. And the race that slows down the nation. It's our foray on behalf of the people into horse racing. Horse organisation, Ando. And a carnival. And- Look, we've given ourselves, I think, plenty of lead time. Mm-hmm. We've already now secured a location. We've done the search. We've thrown the net out across yeah. this wide, beautiful, bloody big brown land of mm-hmm. ours. Had a few towns put their hand up. We've made the selection. Mm-hmm. Everybody was pretty vocal in pushing us towards the town of Wedderburn. Very small town, 500 people. They have a we supermarket the smallest. museum. We're, it's we're, tiny compared to the others. The mayor's on board. 
He shouted everyone drinks at the bar on Friday yeah. when we announced that they'd got the race. And look, and hopefully, as we said, we're capping it at 20 million people, but we'd mm. like the whole of Australia to come. Uh, That's a safe cap. Yeah. Uh, on, on November, is what is it, November 3rd? 2nd. November 2nd. Well, it's the Monday before the Melbourne Cup. So November 2nd, hopefully they can make their way. We slow down the nation. And, um, and see the race. Let's now, look at the positives for a sec, because I know you've got a concern, and I'm all ears. Mm-hmm. My ears are pricked up like a horse, right. waiting to hear your concerns. You know I take them seriously. Mm-hmm. But let's look at the positives. We've got a track. Yep. We've got a town. Yep. It'll be bloody exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a hotel and a motel in the town, so there's accommodation depending on whether or not you like the high-end stuff at the yep. hotel, you're happier to rough it at the motel. Yeah, yeah. There's campsites. They're an RV-friendly town. Yep. They're probably a tidy town. Yep. I haven't checked that, but they seem like they would be. Yeah, absolutely. The Lions Club's on board. Captain of the footy club said he'll provide the full support of the football team yeah. in town. Whatever we need done. It's all hands on deck. And a park bench moved? Don't worry. I get, <laughs> hey, Macca, Steve, yep. grab a couple of the guys from fullback. Just, you know, move the bench. <laughs> That's so the town's on, right? Exactly. And so, I, again, the concern wasn't about moving a park bench. Because <laughs> so, in my mind, you got 22 guys in 40 uniforms who are happy to do it. Um, and if it was, yeah, thank you for alleviating that. If was anyone that out it? There, was that it? If anyone was out there, the people show, of course, and that was their concern. Hey, I'm you, just worried that there might be so- too many park benches in UA. <laughs> guys, we have, how many times do we have to tell you? We've got the football team. They're happy to move the park benches for us. I was watching the league grand final with my brother last night and his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And my brother said, hey, excited about the race that slows down the nation. Yeah. Um, we might come up. We might, uh, we might uh, go, go, to the, go to the race. And I was yep. like, oh, that'd be great. And his girlfriend, Bianca, hadn't really, didn't know too much about it. Sure, everyone's busy. Not everyone can listen to the show. <laughs> and so I just said, podcast, come back to me. Let us know. <laughs> you know and I said, I explained it to her. I said, oh, well, the idea is... You know, we have a, a racetrack that we've we've leased, and we're going to have lots of different types of horses. We don't want these horse races just to be for the great elite horses, but we want any horse like animal. So yeah. a pony, a Shetland in there, a donkey, thoroughbred, a thoroughbred, maybe a Clyde style, like a, someone that had run in a Melbourne Cup, not one one, but yeah. you know, a big big name horse. And just looking at her face, two men in a horse suit, two men in a horse suit. She kind of got a a bit of a concerned look in her face. And I, that concern registered with me because her family owned Maccabi Diva. She knows yep, her horse dad, racing. dad does, doesn't he? Yeah. And she said... She's seen one. She's seen <laughs> she, a few. She's been there. Yeah, she's seen it. She said, oh, all together at the same time or a time trial? And I said... Time trial's no fun. I said, oh, all together at the same time. She said, oh, that won't work. And I said... Well, you know about horses. <laughs> <laughs> and then she uh, informed me. Yes, that, you're yes, from a horsey family. She, she, they've won the World Cup there. And she, she said, there's no way that can that can happen. Horses just don't get along. Yeah, they do. She said the thoroughbred will probably try and trample uh, or get scared. She, it, it, might, it, it might trample the guys in a horse suit, which is worry. She said, that is so, worry. Worry for them. So, and, and for us. And for us. <laughs> Said it's not a great headline. Horses and donkeys don't really get along that well. In yep. fact, horses and horses don't get along that well. That's why they get broken in by trainers. So for us, just putting a blanket, bring your own horse, BYOH, yeah. and then we just sort yep, it yep, out. Yep. Understand. Well, here's the thing. Very, very quickly, without thinking, answer me this. How many horses do you own? None. Me neither. Mm. So that's why it does make sense that I suppose we could have made some logistical mistakes in <laughs> thinking of this race because I've- The event's going ahead. I've only ever been on a horse <laughs> twice. Mm-hmm. Once with, with you. It mm. was with you when we were about 18. Yep. And we went on that. Very boring. <laughs> super boring, um, you know, learn horses trail ride when you and I were on holidays yeah. once. And the second time was in a caravan. Oh, actually, yeah. Caravan I've trip been on horses a, thrice. A caravan trip in the UK yep. and, uh, and you got bucked off. Your I got bucked off. <laughs> So that was no fun. I, I don't have a huge affinity with horses. Yeah. So it makes sense that we might have overseen. <laughs> not, we might not have known what we were doing. So what I want to ask, Cam, people show, 131060. Be honest. Are you in the horse world? Yeah, right. Are you a horse expert? Not just two other idiots like us where you're going, yeah, that should be fine. All right. Have we overlooked anything? Is that what you're saying? Can horses race other types of horse-like animals? Is it safe what are the problems? Will this actually work? Would it? Will it? Could it the, work? The is thing it is, let me say this up front: the race will go ahead no matter what. Yes, we might just have to tweak a few things. Yeah, because there's no way we're cancelling the race. No, thirteen ten six is the number. Is there anyone out there who is in horse circles that knows about this that can set us straight? Dakota, how long have you been into horses? 
Uh, I've been into horses for about 11 years now, and I've actually ridden race horses for about six years. Mm-hmm. That's usually the and way it goes. You usually have about five years of warming up. <laughs> yeah, jump yeah. On. yeah so what, what's, do you, would this work? Can it work? I'd say very fat chance because uh, horses, usually I agree with um, your partner, do not get along with yep. Other animals, and I reckon if you put people in with horses, uh, one of them you'll end up calling an ambulance. Yeah, right. For the horse? Well, it doesn't matter, Ham. I don't think it's a good idea either True. way. Ambulance is bad no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're doing joy rides. Co- on the day. Cody. <laughs> Which would be irresponsible in case they're You're a jockey. Yeah. Um, in your experience, could it work? Can a horse race other types of horses? Well, it sounds insanely fun, but, you know, it doesn't come without massive risk. Interesting. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> they're quite strong animals. I just and love I all, all my... You'll Sorry, You'll need Katie. ambulances. You'll yeah. need ambulances. Okay. <laughs> ambulances, okay. a fleet. Okay, so... Uh, Cody, I'm just... <laughs> all I'm replaying in my brain is Friday's show where we're, like, on the phone to the pub, the mayors, they were like, you've got it, we're going to town. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's just cheering and <laughs> high-fiving and we're all clinking glasses going, we're doing it, we're doing it, we're putting on a horse race. <laughs> And then came the bit where we checked it out, like, can you do this horse race? So, okay, okay we need a fleet of ambulances. So, That's already Cody, bad. as a jockey, have, yeah. can you tell me, as a horse of yours, has it ever seen a donkey and what did it do? Like, what kind of reaction might happen? Well, sometimes, you know, I know, I know um, racetracks, they don't really see smaller you know, donkey-type horses, but when off-the-track horses go to horse shows and see miniature horses for the first time, mm. some of them can go a bit scatterbrained about it. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it'd be a bit weird. the other way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They would play with their perspex- perspective. <laughs> yeah, They'd be like, oh, that yeah, horse yeah. looks like even it's a long a, way even away. Even a really different coloured horse, like a, a, like a white one or a you know, they freak out a bit I sometimes. Think we just assumed <laughs> that horses were fine with each other because we always yeah. see them running around with each other. Because, Cody, I mean, oh, sorry, have we lost Cody? Cody, in my mind, yeah. this would be the final, the ideal final 200 metres. Yeah. Two men in a horse suit are leading. Yeah. They're closing in on the line. <laughs> um, the Shetland's galloping up the middle. Yeah. Out of nowhere, the racehorse comes through. It's almost a photo finish. Mm. Afterwards, the Shetland, two men in a horse suit, and the racehorse kind of all high five with their hoofs. <laughs> We take a photo, <laughs> the front page is, mixed horse race, huge success. <laughs> now, is that likely to happen or not? <laughs> no. That would be the best case scenario, as yeah. long as the, the real race horses don't mow them all down. And, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. If, See, would you, if you were racing... What Cody's saying, Ham, is yeah. that the real race horse will either, either go scatterbrain and go the opposite direction, or maybe through the crowd, and I'm, or I'm, trample... The two men in a horse suit, yeah. which are, for my mind are a must to have on the track. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? I mean, that's the, in fact, a lot of people have been excited about that aspect. Co- uh, sorry, Sam. Sam, how are you into racing? Oh, I'm currently at a horse training place now, but my experience with horses, I rode them across the side of Australia on national trail over a course of a year. Right. Okay, so you're training horses. Is there ever a situation where you have to train, say, a donkey to hang out with a Clydesdale? Yeah, no, not really. Horses are really particular things. Imagine a little kid with a lot of sugar. Yeah. They're really temperamental. If you're going to do it, you're going to have to do it in categories. So horses one, donkeys one, you know, yeah, camels man. the other. Yeah. And also the smell. If you do the camels first, the horses that you put on next will go crazy. They'll be able to smell a camel. Oh, just the, I mean, we oh, never horses. we never mentioned camels, but the, I love the fact that you... Sam, you're right, though. If we found a brown camel with a mane, it certainly would qualify as a horse. Like, and I think we were saying the test would be from 100 metres, looking in if the sun was behind the animal. Could, could you, you tell? It could you mistake all, it for a horse? horse so, in, in, in that rule, a camel so, would have won. So, Sam, you're saying that the smell of another animal can even scatter a horse. Yeah, just the poo that they leave behind, the other yeah. horses can smell them and it just won't like it at all. And okay. it's coming, all this, drama. Sam, 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 coming down the you. home straight, right? Yeah. If you're riding the thoroughbred, say. If you're still on it. Yep. Say, yeah, if you're still on the horse, yeah. say we've overcome all the other problems. It hasn't yep. smelled a Kemble's poo. We've, pl- we've plugged up its nose. <laughs> yep. The nose is not humane. It probably needs it to breathe. But let's just yep. say, or we've, we've sprayed some um, yep. perfume on its nose yep. so it can't smell any other horses. Yep. We've had a yep. Hamish Nanny air freshener <laughs> off its snout. We've got 10 air fresheners hanging off its snout. It's <laughs> got <laughs> snout fresheners. It's going down the home straight. Um, you're on, let's say, American, former Melbourne Cup winner. We've got a big name for the race. Yeah. And, and you're on the horse and you see two men in a horse suit <laughs> sprinting up the track. With the, what, how do you think riding on a horse, how would it react to seeing them? Would it go to trample them? 
Oh, it, it might, or it might sidestep or do a complete 180 on you, and the rider goes forward and the horse goes the other direction. Yeah, and then there's a, then there's a jockey on the on the land as the Shetland, the Clydesdale, and the donkey and the mule and the knight. <laughs> <laughs> in full armour. We did talk about coming it down the track. All, all right, right, yeah, we're going right, right, right. to think about this. I'm hearing um, some messages. I'm getting <laughs> thank the you, thing. Sam. Um, we just have to sit in it. I mean, I'm not going to make a, a swinging statement right now, but let's sleep on it. The best thing to do in mm. the face of... This isn't, by the way, can I just stress, yeah. this race will happen. It's going to happen. Um, turning a blind eye is not happening. I know. That- Sometimes it's fun to turn a blind eye for at least a day. <laughs> yeah, Why don't we... All right, let's... We will honestly sit on this. Why don't we talk to some people overnight? Meet back here tomorrow, Hen. I'm turning me back here tomorrow. And just the race will happen. A race, yes, a race will happen, <laughs> and the, like we're still full steam ahead. Like, because let's not forget about the whole event around it. We've got, <laughs> I know, I know, we've got the celebrity lookalike <laughs> birdcage. <laughs> we've already got Schwarzenegger and Bradley Cooper <laughs> lookalikes booked in. So Guys, the race like, is happening. Yeah, it's Hamish and Andy. Just not happen the way we were thinking it would happen. <laughs> the race is slow down the nation, Ham. Yesterday on the show... And look, oh, we're, we're, sorry, I was doing the trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk to you while I'm doing the trumpet. I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> um, the, 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 no, I'm dizzy. <laughs> not that long a note. No. <laughs> yeah, but I took a massive breath beforehand and I was holding it through the whole song. Wow. <laughs> just waiting for my moment. I was listening to sexual good, healing. Good, just good. you saw me shaking, going blue. I remember your trumpet teacher telling me he's a very good trumpeter. He just he probably prepares he, a bit too early. He just needs to concentrate <laughs> on his breathing a bit. <laughs> okay, well, he doesn't breathe. No, he does. It's very early. He'll sometimes do his inhale on the way to the gig <laughs> to make sure he's ready. <laughs> hey, the race that slows down the nation. Our race, the people's horse race. Yep. Where we have selected a track. We're going to lease that track. Everyone listening now, you are a member. Of the, uh, of the Turf Club. The turf Club. And, uh, well, I think we can say they remember the Hamish and Andy Turf Club. Yes. We've invented the Turf Club. Yep. And we'll be holding our race at the track we've got the lease on. November 2nd, anyone's welcome. It took, look, I wouldn't say a backward step, I'd say a side step yesterday. A hurdle. There's mm. definitely a hurdle thrown up, but maybe such <laughs> a large hurdle that we decided to veer off to the left or the right. Not, not a hurdle we wanted to jump over. <laughs> yeah. A side, Sky we, high hurdle. We sidestepped the, we side-stepped which, the hurdle. Which is which, legal. <laughs> no. No, it's not, but uh, you can if you want. <laughs> it's not legal in a hurdles race, but it's certainly legal if you're just doing some freestyle running. <laughs> <laughs> True, because the original idea... And the original conception, uh, or the concept, sorry, mm. was that um, we would have all different horse type animals. True. Well, let donkeys, me just say, mules, Clydesdale, it was. Horse. We never really. We were like, we want to have a race, yeah. and then we were like, what can the race be? But mm. as you said, yeah, anything that was a horse like animal: Shetland, yeah. thoroughbred, mm. miniature pony, two men and a horse. Whatever. And it came to my attention from someone who's very much into horses that that would not work because horses don't get along and they'll probably get startled, trample each other it's and trample people as well. We put it out on 131060 yesterday. Were you in the notes? People show, of course. Are you a horse trainer? Do you, are you into horses? Could it work, this style of race? Would this work? Can it work? I'd say very fat chance because uh, horses do not get along with yep. other animals. And I reckon if you put people in with horses, uh, one of them, you'll end up calling an ambulance. Well, it sounds insanely fun, but, you know, it doesn't come without massive risk. Interesting. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> they're quite strong animals. I just and love I all, all my... You'll Sorry, need Katie. ambulances. You'll yeah. need ambulances. Okay. <laughs> ambulances, a fleet. Horses are really particular things. They're really temperamental. It might sidestep or do a complete 180 on you and the rider goes forward and the horse goes the other direction. All right, yeah, we're going to think about this. I'm hearing Um, some messages. (laughs) Thank you, Seb. So that was a problem for us. We, I guess we thought of the race Mm. with maybe like a cartoon conception of horses in our head without remembering that these are actual animals with temperaments and things they do and don't. Do. I mean, different species. And we love them as animals, but I mean, yeah. There's a I'd have to say right now, as yeah. team players and as listeners of the show, horses are jerks a bit because <laughs> yeah. they have let us down in mm. a big way by not being the kind of animal we want them yeah. to be for the spectacle of the race. So at first, Ando, you and I walked away from yesterday's show going, hmm, lemons. Yeah. But then an idea hit where we went, oh, hang on, lemonade. And it was... I suppose Spark, because when we were asking people to, or telling people about this idea and asking people to come forward with their horses, the majority of people were just 
vying for the role of two men in a horse suit, which is what we thought that would be included in the race. Had. We thought there'd be one. And no doubt trampled if we decided <laughs> yeah, if to. If there was a giant, a thoroughbred in there. So then we started looking at the emails and people were coming and going, I'd love to be in the horse suit, love to be in the horse suit. We mm. thought, had a bit of a look around. No one in possibly the world, at least not in Australia, has got the the, the ownership mm. or the jump mm. on this race, this kind of a race. We will have, the race that slows it down the nation will now officially be mm. 100% mm. people in either one-person horse suits <laughs> or the more respectable well, form of the horse suit, yeah. the two-person yeah, horse suit. suit, the classical form of the horse suit. Yes. A full suit must be worn to enter the race. Thirteen, ten, sixty. How many horses will we have, Ando? Fifty. We will have fifty horses. <laughs> <laughs> we will have fifty, which I think is horses. also a record. Which I haven't could seen be. fifty horses. I haven't in seen a race. fifty people in horse suits <laughs> running around the track. We will be a full lap of the track. Oh, that's long. So it's eight, eight, eight hundred meters. Yourself. We can't have the people in the two-man horse suits going that length. So the other thing we thought was we could mm. stagger it, mm-hmm. but we want them all running in the same race: two-man horse suits and one-man horse suits. Thirteen, ten, sixty. Number one. Have you got a horse suit? Yes. Number two, now upon hearing this, mm. would you be interested in registering as a horse? Mm. The, the the race will be open to attend for everyone. Yes. But only 50 horses. <laughs> you must register if you want to be a horse. 13, 10, 60. Do you have a horse suit? I do have a horse suit. Well, tell me what it's like and I'll tell you whether it would pass. Uh, it's very, very, it's flimsy material. It was bought. It's one of those flat pack costumes. Mm-hmm. It's about 45 bucks. Onesie, is it? Uh, it's kind of like a scratchy, but a whole body. It's whole body. Okay, it passes. Because I just don't want very someone, good. I don't want someone wearing a horse mask or something. No, no, anyway, no, call if you've got a horse suit. It's very scratchy and hot. Thirteen ten sixty. If you're interested in running, you we'd like to hear about your horse suit. <coughs> We've decided overnight <laughs> that uh, look definitely persuaded or or put a point in a certain direction by the people as it's people show because there was an overwhelming response for people wanting to be. The horse suit. Two guys yeah. in a horse suit for our original race. And we realised that the idea we had for our original race just can't be done with horses. No, no. So that was flawed in, other. Flawed in <laughs> or, or bystanders. <laughs> flawed in that sense that it was just mm. going to be an absolute, it was not going to be good for the animals or good for the bystanders. Right. But I feel like in that process, we've Ooh. now come up with what the race should always have been. Yep. The truest form of the people's race. Andy, is it not, would it not have been a lie to call it the people's race if the people could not race? Um, I don't would know not have? how many double negatives did you put in. No, it would not haven't been. And okay. that's why it had to happen that the, the, the race now yep. is open to all the people of this great land. If you can get a horse suit, it will now be a race. I say I agree. <laughs> yeah. You're just with me in spirit. I'm with you. Just, I'm with you, Peter. I don't want to get tripped up by a negative, but I'm with you. Here's um, the thing. Sarah you, Ham is, is joins us. Sarah, have you got a horse suit? Yep, I do. What kind of horse suit? It's a horse onesie, but um, I feel like it's... You know, an accurate representation it's of what a horse looks like. It doesn't have a head. too floppy, is it? Uh, nah. Does it? Right? Ha- I think it needs a head, though. It need, or does, does, it's does, got like it's got it's got like a, a hood? hood. Yeah. I think that passes for me then, Ham. How are you feeling uh, about it? Okay, Sarah, do go to hamishani dot com to register. We're, we're chucking up a form as Soon. we speak. Yeah. Um, because there is only going to be... a really convincing horse, you know. I don't doubt it, Sarah. (laughs) Um, I mean, you'll need to register a horse name, a photo of you in the suit. Have you ever been in the suit before? Uh, no, I was saving it for a special occasion. So. <laughs> you've, never, you've owned this thing. Okay, that does add a little bit more weight, weight to, to yeah. this. Okay. It would be lovely to see you in it, Sarah, but you can get the horse outfits that have a level of stiffness to the neck and mm. your face actually comes out sort of mid-neck and you've got a horse's head above oh, okay. the so head. That's what my suit, I'm not saying my suit's the best. It's very cheap from China. It's yeah. scratchy material, but that's... Well, hang on. What I'm keen to establish here for people that may want to run in the race as a horse... What are we allowing? What aren't we allowing? We, it must be a full-bodied suit. We, yeah. so as a we hood's said, fine? A hood is acceptable. Yeah. So she's the bare minimum, would you say? You qualify on the outfit category, mm. but then we might sort of assess the whole out, the whole rest of your get-up, your horse name. Your game. Yeah. Your okay. game. Nick, have you got one? Uh, not yet, but I will do everything in my power to get one, boys. Okay. That's the spirit, wow. Nick. Um, Nick, would uh-huh, you... A the size of Farlap, <laughs> even if you don't have the rest of the horse's body to put the heart in. Nick, um, as far as your horse suit, would you go the onesie? Are you more of a single runner, or do you think you can find a pal? And... Uh, no, I'll be running in a partnership with my best mate, Stuart. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Sure. And, and Nick, it, let it be known that we the two-man horse suit, mm. or two-lady horse suit, mm. is really... 
the most elegant and classical form of the horse suit, and and most as, respected, and most respected yep. in in man man horse racing <laughs> circles. So you will, will be given a very significant head start. Andy and I were just chatting during the song. We yes. think loosely the race will be something like everyone in a two man horse suit yep. will start halfway around the track, four hundred meters on the other side start. of the track. And the single uh, single suitors will have to do the full 800 metres. <laughs> the idea being that hopefully on the final turn, both packs have merged and we've got a 50 horse race on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> Carly, you have a horse suit. I do. I am, unfortunately, I'm not able to make the event, but I have just recently bought a horse suit. Is it, is it a two man or a one man? Um, it's a one man, but it looks like as someone's riding the horse. It's a blow up one. Love that one. <laughs> okay, They're really okay, good. Okay, I want to see a lot of those. They're very fun. <laughs> okay. And so yeah. you become the jockey, yeah. and there's fake yeah. legs and a fake horse's um, head. sort of torso come out in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. We'd definitely accept that. We love we? those as yeah, long right. as as long as the person run, running in it yep. is dressed as a jockey. Oh, you have oh. to do the top half. You have to do the top well, half. I yeah. can't. Unfortunately, I can't make it, so I'm, I'm it, looking. Carly, for cancel. Say, cancel what you've got. Carly, got, we might got start up. Ready? We're going to start cancel up another it. website, uh, horsesuittrader.org. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> tonight, where people like like yourself can come together. Got a suit, need a suit. There'll be two options there, <laughs> and so the horse suit community can find. It's perfect, sort of like eBay, but just specifically for horse suits. <laughs> Maddie, have you got a horse suit, mate? Mate, I got a tandem bicycle that I want to chuck a horse suit over the top of. Is that legal? Let's just have a quick chat amongst the stewards here. Jack, you can be one of the stewards. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, Look, guys, I think it has to be manpower. Yeah. I think, well, I mean, obviously, a bike is manpowered. manpowered. But I think it has to be no mechanical advantage. Well, it would be me, me and my wife. All right, well, I mean, lady, man, man, human. man, and woman power. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, don't sure. know if you can have mechanical advantage. In fact, I'll go so far as to say this: we'll be inspecting every suit for bikes. Would we? Lifting okay. up the hoofs, lifting up the bottom just to make sure there's no wheels there. Because it's on a dirt track. I mean, yeah. the bike would be an insane advantage. Yeah, I was just going to say, do we start them and further 400 metres back? <laughs> so you guys, <laughs> you guys have to do 1.2 gas. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I think no, it's too right. dangerous. <laughs> a very, very fast <laughs> bike category. <laughs> <laughs> bike category has a huge <laughs> level of I difficulty. Because then pe- where do you draw the line? Then Matt, you have dirt bikes? Matt, that's pending. I think that's silly for me. If there's a tandem dirt bike out there, <laughs> I think it's pretty creative. Yeah, it is creative. Oh, <laughs> and, and I think it brings a pizzazz to your race. That's yeah. what you need. Oh, mate, yeah, we've got yeah, 50 yeah. people in horse suits <laughs> running around. I'm like, well, you already have pizzazz, but I don't, also, I don't disagree. Yeah, well, okay. What if someone wants to come in kangaroo boots or you, okay, know, you yeah, start no, adding? No, 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 no added extras. Or a jetpack. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, I'm not saying no to it. I'm just, this yeah, is, no, 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 when you silly. invent a sport, you also, have to have guidelines. a bike, the reason why on runner's tracks there's a bike lane and a running lane is for safety. Yep. And, and also, if we, if we have do, do we want to Maddie see? and his wife just flying around in a tandem bike? Like I'll ask you this. I'll ask you this, yeah. Ando. Do we want to see a two-person horse suit mm. and the legs comically running along underneath the horse, which yeah. is a spectacle we all want to see? And yeah. you covered in brown carpet, and you've got a broomstick up the horse's head, yeah. and it's a wonderful spectacle. Or do we want to see those two legs hovering. pedaling a bike, hovering? Essentially, it'll, it'll appear like they're just hovering along. <laughs> because, it'll, it'll, yeah. and then how are they going to hold the handles? Because yeah. you. There's going to be a pair of human arms yeah, coming Matt, out from it. It's a no, horse. Matt. It's, it's going to look no, fake as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas all the other horses. <laughs> if someone just turned up and didn't know, yeah. they'll think it was a real horse race until they saw the bike and they go, I think this thing's a joke. Same shady. Hame <laughs> on November the 2nd. <laughs> Good playing, mate. Ah, yes. <laughs> We're having the race that slows down the nation. Thanks for bringing your trumpet again. No it problems, is Chief. Be, it is a race in a small town of Wedderburn, open to everyone in Australia to come, or international if you want to fly yourself in. And we... <laughs> <laughs> Generous offer. <laughs> Podcasters that are wishing to, you know, book now. It's three and a half weeks away, so... Yeah, 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 yeah. Fly in. Fly on in. Mm. Um, okay, I challenge, I challenge one international guest. Great. To book, you know what? Yeah. If they do, if you contact us, amishandy.com, yeah. and you can say, look, I'm an international podcaster. Yeah. I'm flying in. Here's my ticket. Yep. Here's a scan of my ticket. We'll take care of your accommodation. 
Okay, yeah, good. Limit one. First in, best dress. Yes, exactly. Best, one per person. One per person. No, one one, one per show. One, per yeah. one, one total. So, if you, if you the second one, <laughs> one what total. a stitch up. But you'll still have a great time because the yeah. day is going to be a heck of a day. <laughs> so, if someone books their ticket, scans it and shows us that, then we go, oh, sorry, the second. Yeah, you still come. You come. I mean, but accommodation, they've got a hotel, they've got a motel, camping ground, caravan exactly. park. It's not like they can't um, come. I just, suppose it wasn't a great investment. All we're saying, we're literally <laughs> saying if you spend probably about three or four grand to fly from Iceland or something, yeah, yeah. we're going to shout you 120 bucks at the caravan park. <laughs> so you're still going to be out of pocket both ways. It wasn't a great offer to be with. Anyway, the race, though, we anyone in a horse suit. Ham, yep. Horse suits are different styles. There'll be the, the classic horse suit's the one we like the most. Well, if the you're two a, man horse suit. a two-man or two-lady horse suit, uh, we will we respect the classic version of the horse suit, and you'll start halfway around the track. It is an eight hundred meter course. Yep. The people in the one man horse suits yep. uh, it has to be a full body horse suit. Yep. You guys will have to do eight hundred meters. Mm. Uh, the two manner only has to do four hundred meters. Yep. yep. Now we're just making these distances <laughs> up. To, it could take ages. <laughs> Yeah, we don't we know. The idea is that as you're coming around the home bend, hopefully both swarms have caught each other, yep, yep. and we've got a fifty horse stampede mm. for the finish line. Caleb joins us after hearing about the horse suit race, and um, he, you know, someone Caleb who is used to being in the the two man, the classic horse suit. Ahoy, boys! Ahoy, Ahoy to Caleb. you, Caleb. Yeah, so uh, my good friend Sam's cousin uh, has got the Guinness World Record, and I'm just looking at the official page here right now, mm. uh, the fastest 10-kilometer run wearing a pantomime costume, bracket, two-person, and he did his in a horse suit. 10 Ks? What was his yeah. time for a 10 K? Uh, 40 minutes and two seconds. Oh, my Whoa, God. God. That's okay. fast for a non-horse suited man. <laughs> so- yeah, I know. The previous one was 40 minutes, 18 seconds, so I only just got in there. Wow. And so, Caleb... That's insane. If the guy that was in the back got back problems... Hey, that's running at like 15 k's an hour. And, uh, and Well, I mean, the guy at the back, yeah, I've met him, and he is quite tall. Like, he'd be close to six foot, if not over. Was he hunched the whole time? <laughs> I mean, it was three years ago that he did it. I think yeah. he's recovered now. Yeah, gosh. Running for 10 k's hunched over at a, like, well, at Caleb, a very competitive pace, too. You've probably talked to them a fair bit. Obviously, they would have trained for a while. Yeah, they'd been training for a long time, um, and uh, apparently, yeah, they they were set not to break the record with just a mile to go, um, but managed to pick up the pace in the last in the last oh, mile. Got a gallop up, Caleb. Yeah. In your limited yeah, experience, and just, until then. and just just second hand uh, chat to your mates at the pub who were inside a Guinness World record breaking attempt in a horse suit. Do you think we're being too generous now that I hear how fast they went? Too generous. Is that too much of a head start? A head start, if we like a half a, half, a track. half track head start. I wouldn't recommend a ten kilometer. Um, no, no, track. it's only going to be an eight hundred meter race. Well, you know, no one wants to watch a forty minute <laughs> race, and that's if someone is on world record but, time. But with, we're like, we're going to have. We're thinking it's an eight hundred meter track for single persons, and then four hundred meters. So they start on the other side, and they'll probably, you know, the eight hundred meter guys will join them as they they run around, and then by all hit the finish line. Do you you think it's too generous that we're giving a half track lead to the double suit guys? No, I don't think it's too generous at all. I think that's about perfect. If yeah. the single people have to run double the distance, that makes it about fair. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. sort of what we were going off to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we, I mean, all three of us are experts in the field. I mean, you've got a mate whose cousin <laughs> broke the world record. I, I, yeah, my, my friend's cousin in Manchester. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Caleb, can I just quickly ask, do they do it round like an Olympic running track? Uh, it was during, I think, like a, uh, a 10 kilometre fun run, and they got the official guy with from Guinness with the clipboard out. Jeez, Jeez. So they had traffic as well to navigate their way through. It's fascinating. Brilliant. Well, maybe they yeah. would like to fly out to the free <laughs> accommodation <laughs> and, and also <laughs> participate in the race. Jeez, like an international horse. <laughs> I, I do feel like this is the kind of thing, though, that, that they would be waiting their whole lives to hear about, wouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. I did let him know, um, but unfortunately, yeah, he's got exams and he's in Manchester. Yeah, yeah, the, the first one was annoying, but the second one was pretty easily fixed. <laughs> uh, mate, thank you very much for joining us. Register if you want to have a crack in a horse suit at running in the race that slows down the nation. HamishNetty.com. I wouldn't mind being a horse. There's a little button on the right-hand side. Go click on that and register, Ham. It's now I feel like, Ando, now that we've nailed the race, Yep. doesn't it just feel like... 
the greatest event on the sporting calendar for the whole year? It did before for me. It did. <laughs> yeah. And look, uh, it did. It certainly and I- cements itself as the greatest event. Now we've got 50 horses mm. running against each other in what can only be described as a well thought out and fair contest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. Thank you to Jess Malboy, who also appeared on the show. Yes. She became Jess Meowboy for us, singing covers only in cat language. That video will be up in about 10 minutes' time at hamishnetty.com, so go check it out, and we'll catch you tomorrow, everyone. Have a good night.